Would you like a chocolate covered pretzel? <laughs> I hate are it. We, are we done with like saying things before we play the music? She just <laughs> pointed at me, so I just did it. I thought maybe somebody would say something. This can this all. Th- we did this last time too. No, I don't want to repeat the same the thing. The joke is dead. Anyways, I, mean, who I wasn't are trying we? to make a joke. Hmm. Who are we? Crosscut Cinema. Yep. What are we here to do? Talk about Cut shit. Cut some cinema crossly. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. I hate myself sometimes. Be a rat awful. in a mall. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a rat. Be a Ben Fleck. Okay, so to conquer our journey of re- reviewing every Kevin Smith film, here we are. Wait, again. hold on. I'm Madison. I'm Bree. I'm Franny. I thought everyone was going to be more frantic about I'm that. I'm interrupted and I'm Logan. But Brittany said, who are we? And we didn't actually say the people she, that we she were. Did. She said CrossCut Cinema. That's all we are now. By the we're way, guys. We're a product now. I love all the, the brand. I love all the different spellings of my names we get in comments. That's a joke you already said in the last one. That joke's dead. Oh, okay. Well, fuck me, I guess. Off to a great start, kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Mall rats. Yes. Mall rats. That's where we begin our journey. We do indeed. So funny thing about mall rats, um, Kevin Smith's sophomore feature, uh, pretty much just took the concept of clerks and put it in a mall Two guys <laughs> bullshitting around about superhero sex organs as Stanley put it. Um, but what's weird about this movie is it was one of the biggest commercial flops of universal's history, not just Kevin Smith. Mm-hmm. This movie did nothing, <laughs> made no money. And on top of that, the, um, oh, what is the name of the band? Beverly Hills guys, Weezer. Weezer did a song called Suzanne for the film. The film did so bad that the soundtrack made more money than the film's feature <laughs> release. Oh that's, my God. That's kind of funny. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Um, and a big part of that, as Ben Affleck put it, being one of his first features, is he said, if you, if a movie set is like insane fun, like so much fun, you know, the movie's just going to fucking bomb <laughs> because they had an insane amount of fun on that set. People were playing pranks on each other. It was like pretty much like a college party the whole time because it was Kevin Smith's second feature. So he didn't know what the fuck he was doing with a huge budget. Yeah. Everybody just palling around. Yeah. So, um, what did you think about a young Jason Lee and a young Ethan supply? I love him. I love Jason Lee. Like, mm-hmm. I think we've definitely talked about Jason Lee on this podcast mm-hmm. before and like our love for him. He I, I don't remember why we've talked my about name him. Is Earl. Well, no, no, he I know. He was in but, uh, Vanilla Sky, right? Right. That's why we oh, talked so shit. much about him. Yeah, that's him. right. Yeah. No, I'm, I love Jason Lee. I still do. That hasn't changed. His name <laughs> is still Earl to yeah, me. Earl. Earl Hickey. Yeah. And this is like, yeah, this is where Earl and Randy first met. Yep. Converge. Absolutely. That they met on this set. It was actually... Jason Lee was coming off of being a professional skateboarder and was retiring at 20 or so. Was um, he a Scientologist That's insane. Yet? No. He he is so yummy in this film. I'm sorry? <laughs> he is kind of cute. <laughs> so I'm right? sorry? Did you say? Yummy? Ew. He's like, he's like kind of like dirtbag cute, you know? I love it. I'd, I'd be down. I, uh, <laughs> I watched this uh, movie um, with a friend of mine forever ago, and he always talks about this, and it really has like haunted my mind. If Jason Lee had picked his career path just a little bit differently, he would totally be a Ryan Reynolds figure because he carries that mm. Van Wilder energy in yeah. all these older flicks. Like he For really sure really does. He could. I mean, he's had a great career monetary wise like all the alvin and the chipmunks films i'm sure have done really well for him God, he was in those <laughs> yes. alvin! yeah he's that guy <laughs> oh God. And, uh, oh he was God. also in memphis beat where he played a cop who i think was supposed to be like prejudiced but had a good heart deep down and it was not a good show it was really trash mm-hmm. um, i've never heard of it and it's probably yeah. why yeah it was it was terrible um but like you know, if you didn't spend your childhood watching My Name is Earl, I feel sorry for you. Like, Dude, that's, My Name is Earl's the best. I didn't spend my childhood watching it because I, w- I didn't watch stuff like that, but I spent, I watched it with Logan a couple years back and it was fucking amazing. My Name is Earl is so like culturally important. It's so perfect. <laughs> and also like very slept on, but it's so good. I mean, yeah, it, it's, well, you know, at the time it was really popular. It won, mm-hmm. a, it won a couple of Emmys. Um, I remember it won uh, Emmy for like a best singular episode for the one where they were tripping out on shrooms and it was all claymation. <laughs> um, oh my God. I remember that one. Yeah, it was a good one. 
Holy but, shit. Um, the show ended on a cliffhanger, which they never... Yeah. It's never, so upsetting to me still to this day. Yeah. So I, um, I remember when he went on Kevin Smith's show, Spoilers, he talked about like how they really want to just do like a TV movie and Kevin Smith offered to direct it. So if it ever happens, it'll be K-Smith. That sounds great. It, does it really sound does. Great. Have you guys seen recent pictures of Ethan Supply? Like he looks... Yeah, I mean, he looks different now, he, doesn't he? He glowed yeah, the fuck Yeah, he's, like, he's like a bodybuilder now. He got like now. cut and stuff. Oh, okay. He's like super, he's like ridiculously sexy. He it's definitely ridiculous. doesn't look like how he did in this film. No, not like in American <laughs> History X either or mm. any of the other movies where he was like this huge dude. Um, but like back to Mallrats. Um, <laughs> back to Mallrats. <laughs> Wait, what was his last name again? Sorry. Ethan, Ethan. Supply. S-U-P-L-E-E. I think. Wouldn't that be Supply? But it's oh, pronounced wow. Supply. He really, really has glowed him. up. Yeah, for sure. I think he got sick of being cast as the fat guy and stuff. Yeah, fair enough. So he decided to just literally bulk up. That's fair. I mean, you do what you want to do, dude. Yeah, he looks good. I like the beard in this picture that I found. <laughs> yeah, he's quite the snack nowadays. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, with mole rats, I feel like I keep getting off point here. <laughs> what was your guys' thought on the structure of like the... Like, obviously, these characters are meant to be, like, college age, and it, it kind of has, like, a, like, as Ebert put it, like, a Degrassi junior high feel with, like, dirt on it. Yeah. Um, he didn't like this movie, though. He he did not like this movie. He said he hated it, but I feel like that's a great review. <laughs> but um, I mean, that's kind of, that's pretty accurate. Yeah, I mean, it's, it. you're not going into this getting, like, you know, you're not going to get, there will be blood. You're going to get a shitty but kind of fun yeah. American Pie type movie. Although right. I feel like it was more restrained and actually funnier than American Pie, but I mean, everybody's got their yeah. own opinions. Came out around the same time. Kind of got washed it. out by it. I mean, I feel you like it's very much like a... She's never seen American Pie? I haven't That's either. probably for what the best. What the fuck? Okay, You guys, guys would hate Except it. I love um, fuck, Alison Han- uh, Hannigan. Alison Hannigan, yeah. I fucking love her. And so it's kind of upsetting in that regard that I've never seen it. All yeah, right. I mean, you, I mean, you, you post the American comparisons, and, and Kevin Smith always talks about the scene that he wanted to do, where um, for some reason somebody ejaculates and it gets in somebody's hair in mall rats. That was originally like, mm-hmm. going to be a thing, and then the studio Universal was like, "You can't do that in a movie. It will literally lose us money." And then the following year, American Pie comes out, and what happens in the movie? A hmm. Girl gets ejaculate into her hair. So. Clearly, he was just slightly ahead of his time as in <laughs> cringy college humor. Um, yeah, I mean, it is very much like a teen college movie, mm-hmm. Mallrats is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, like in, a, in a good way. For one, like some of the shots are so perfectly campy. It kind of reminds me of like the like 1960s Batman, like, you know, like the old school, like Dutch yeah, angles. I mean, yeah, and, and it like draws a lot from, I think, that kind of like... Mm-hmm. Like the the um the police string where they're hugging yeah. each other and it just whips up all crazy looking. Yeah, that's like really funny. <laughs> or the the whole schooner bit coming to a head, where he gets upset, runs over to the to the stalling, like the the the, the mm-hmm. scaffolding of the stage, hits it, and then Bob actually thinks he moved it with his. Yeah, mind. and like those that scenes are a- really funny, and yeah, and I like that it like it. it, it it's funny because it's like for no reason at all. I mean, I guess there is a reason for it, but like it, it like draws from these like pop culture moments of like so long ago. And I guess that's because like it has a main character who's like obsessed with that kind of pop cult, pop mm-hmm. culture. And Kevin and because himself Kevin Smith is, is so is as well. Yeah, I was about to say that. But um, yeah, like there's this film is riddled with reincorporation. Yeah, like they make the whole joke, which like there's so many good quotes from this movie, like. That kid should respect and fear that escalator. And he keeps <laughs> the whole time in the movie. They need to get that kid off that fucking escalator. And then finally, they're about to get arrested for fighting the, the fuck boys in front of the comic book right, shop. And, then the kid and all the like, cops are like, hey, there's a kid stuck in an escalator. <laughs> like they really reward you because Kevin Smith is so the written word. Like he is not exactly yeah. Mr. You know, like, let me show you how cool this sweeping shot is. He's no Christopher Nolan. But his dialogue is where everything yeah. shines. And when he, he rewards you by hanging on to every word because he reincorporates as much as he yeah. possibly can. Mm-hmm. Also, that that's me. Saying Bridget fears and respects escalators. <laughs> Mostly fear. <laughs> Mostly fear. I don't like you, but I'm not coming anywhere near you. Correct. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I have such fond memories pre-COVID of going to the movie theater over by where you guys used to live. Yeah. And the escalator and Bridget would be standing next to me going on the escalator because you had to take an escalator to get up into the like theater. It's like in a mall and it's on the top floor. And Bridget just standing next to me being afraid. Yeah. 
Just absolutely petrified. Yeah, I remember. Um, I used to watch these like conspiracy theory dark sort of videos, which I still watch talk actually. About, the, about an escalator? Are you talking about the Shane Dawson one? Yeah, I didn't know if we were... Oh, don't say... That, oh. that shall not be named. Oh, God. Don't demonetize that's, us. That's why Please. I didn't say anything. Should we go back and... We no. Can no. Spice no. Audio? Okay. No. no. Who knows? Maybe we'll get some more views. Hey, guys. <laughs> Shane um, Dawson. He's something, right? Anyway. Anyway, he did this video <laughs> in which a clip of a mother um, and her child were going up the escalator somewhere, and it fucking, like, fell apart. <gasps> yeah, I remember that. And the... Oof. And, like... They both went in and the mom was able to save the child, but she, the mom later died. And I, after that, I was like, Ooh. Do you know how she died? Being mauled by the fucking that, escalator. That makes sense. Just making sure. Like in the machinery. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to make sure we were talking about the same thing here. One time I was yeah. at CVG, um, the airport, and I was on an escalator um because you have you basically have to ride escalators in airports mm-hmm. um and it fucking shocked me like i got what an electric fuck? shock from an escalator at <laughs> cvg so cvg if you're listening i'm filing a complaint formally right now <laughs> while Jesus we film this podcast yeah it was, Record. it was a long time ago but it was still upsetting but i mean is there a good are you gonna give like a general like plot synopsis of sure. what okay. happens? I, mean, I can do that. I feel like, I feel like this one's very easy to summarize. It is, but there's two you're just good at it. Twenty or somethings that are dealing with different issues of selfishness involving their girlfriends, only seeing their perspective and the male perspective in general. Um, uh, yeah, they say both have recently broke up with or yeah, their girlfriends broke the gr- up with both him, girlfriends with them. dumped them um, for good reason, and um, basically the whole movie one who's thinking he's hyper obsessed with getting her back and feeling like he was wronged. The other character being like the wannabe, like, Oh, I don't give a fuck about anything. The don't give a fuck about character secretly pining and wishing he also got his girlfriend back. Right. And they, I wish I could say they learned a lot, but I think it's more just about they, they somewhat learned more about themselves. I think yeah. both of them realized they were being selfish in a way, <laughs> but overall it was more about the insane journey of the hijinks at the small where they're both trying to win back their girlfriends and their girlfriends are both like, get the fuck out of here. Right. Um, one Shannon Doherty who I love. Oh my God. Oh my God. The moment with Ethan supply. Yeah. When he supply. goes, he goes, Brandy, Brenda, Oh Brenda. And she's like, Dick, Dick and pushes them <laughs> in reference to obviously her like most, like 90210. Yeah, 90210. Yeah. Obviously to reference that, but um I just love how she came off of 90210 fame, a very innocent role, and did this. <laughs> well, you know, fun fact, she almost didn't get the part. She oh the part almost went to Jenny McCarthy. Um I love Shin Doherty so much. Yeah, Me I'm, too. I'm also, glad it did. Also, I have I have heard it, that she is just a raging bitch. I've heard that like, too. Like she's terrible to work with. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> but um But like wouldn't you be if you were beautiful? Right? Yeah, there's a great story behind this were, Jenny McCarthy thing. So if you um, were Shannon Doherty, wouldn't you be right. a bitch? I mean, like, yeah, you're like the hottest thing on the planet. Right. Like, but you're not getting any work because you're such a bitch, so it makes you even more mad. Right. Right. But anyways, you said there's a good story. So yeah, so um Kevin Smith is on his second film and there's this producer named uh, I think his name is Jim Jacks or something like that. Something along those lines. Um and up until the casting of the what's the girlfriend of Brody's name? What's her character's name again? I always Brandy brand. No, that's Br- Brandy's the other one. Brandy's not Brenda. No, no. Brandy is <laughs> Brandy. Spenning is, is TS's girlfriend. Yeah, okay, who's the other on. character? Her name is Brandy. Yeah. Brandy Spenning. I don't know why I thought it was. Something else. I don't know. I don't know what her name is, but Shannon, anyway, Shannon's character. Shannon yeah. Shannon's character. character. I can never remember. I'll, I'll just look it up. I can't believe I can't remember it right now. Anyway. So, um, not the point. Originally supposed to be Jenny McCarthy. Y- well, so this is what happened during all the casting. It was just Jim Jacks, uh, Scott Mosier, Kevin Smith's producer. He puts on everything. Renee and Kevin Smith himself. And they cast almost the entire movie by themselves mm-hmm. um, because the studio was like, we don't care. We don't care. All these studio execs, though, um, at the time that they were casting mall rats, Jenny McCarthy's Playboy came out mm. and Jenny McCarthy comes to the audition. And for some reason, even though the room had always been filled with only three people, 30 executives showed up to watch her performance because I'm because Kevin Smith put it as their creepy, weird Hollywood pervs. Right. Um, and they wanted her to read out like a sex scene. And he said he felt uncomfortable the whole time. And he 
pulled her outside of the audition room and said, hey, let me, you and me just have an audition and we won't do that creepy sex stuff. Mm -hmm. And what? I just looked up Jenny McCarthy just for reference. I know who that is, but mm -hmm. I don't know why. And apparently she's an anti-vaxxer. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. So, so don't worry, we'll get into this. Um, she thinks that he's singling her out in a bad way. She blows up on him. And by the way, apparently her audition was terrible. She blows mm. up on him and leaves for pulling him out around the hallway and be like, Hey, I feel like you're, I feel like it's affecting your performance. All these people are in the room. Let me, and you just read back and forth real fast. Mm. And she apparently blew up and she like went to their car and drove off. And then the whole studio was trying to be like, Hey, you should hire her. And she's like, he's like, I, she did a terrible audition and she blew up and walked out the door. I'm not going to hire right. her. And so he hired Jane and Doherty. Um, Later, she, she obviously Jenny McCarthy's career has gone fine. Yeah, um, she, she's doing all right. Um, so she, in a in a in a, I think it was like a commentary for a movie she did. She talked shit on Kevin Smith, saying, "Oh, he was like they were all laughing at me in the room, and they they were like making fun of me, and then he made me leave, and he called me an ugly bitch, which like none of that was true, obviously. Um, but she was just salty because she didn't get the part. Mm. So he gets a response about this, like, "Hey, do you want to respond to this?" And he was so angry because she was like, like just slamming his name. Right. And then he called her and she didn't return his call. And he was like trying every which way to communicate with her. Like, sorry, that happened, whatever. Then she goes on and says, oh, he's been harassing me, trying to get me to change what I said, but it's what really oh happened. Oh my God. What so he responds with, well, we didn't laugh at her in the room. We waited until she was out in the parking lot <laughs> just to be like, fuck you, bitch. And ever since she does anything to fuck over his career. Wow. Anything. It's like That's a known really beef in Hollywood. And he's like, I don't know what the fuck I did to her. Like he was going to be on this Hollywood game night show with a, I think it's Jane Lynch. And he's been on it since, but it was the same night that Jenny McCarthy was going to be there. And she actually got him pulled off. So they put a fucking TA on a non-celebrity on their celebrity game show. That's crazy. Wow. That's wow. how much she hates him. What a salty bitch. I know. <laughs> I know. And he was just like, he's like, fuck her. Honestly, like I'm over it. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So I'm glad it was Shannon Doherty. I can't imagine Jenny McCarthy in that role doing any good with it at all. But then there yeah, was like Shannon Doherty was, well, I liked her character a she lot. Really, like, she really like, she pulled the energy together. She made you believe yeah. that somebody would actually want to have sex with Jason Lee's character and would actually still be a respectable character in general. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. yeah. Like it's so hard to believe, but like how you fucking see her, awful he but is. then it's like, you get it though. You mm -hmm. get it a little bit. Yeah. She makes it all believable by being kind of, I guess you could say patient with him when he says something ridiculous. She like kind of rolls it off. Like I like yeah. the idiot. She At one point she says like, she like likes the idiot or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. And she kind of has like, Shannon Doherty does this thing. Like she has this vibe where she's just always kind of a little bit like, you know? Yeah. She's yeah. Like, oh, what the fuck ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The perfect person to be with somebody who always is going to say something that re gets that reaction. That yeah. was just Brenda as a character too. Mm -hmm. She's always kind of, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really I liked her. And um mm -hmm. yeah, and then with what was I gonna say? With uh there was another person reading for the um Brandy girl, and that was Joey Lauren Adams, um, who did a great read. He was gonna give her the job, and then she said to him, Well, let me ask you something. If I get the job, am I allowed to still ask you out on a date? This is a true story. And he goes, I don't think that'd be appropriate. And then she's like, Well, do you want to go on a date? Because I'd rather go on the date. <laughs> and so they started going out. Oh. He wrote her into the movie. She's um the Gwen, the Gwen character, whom I love. She's Can one we of the best talk parts. About her for yeah. a second, like I am obsessed with the way that her voice sounds. Mm -hmm. She has mm -hmm. the one of the most iconic, like like whispery kind of like nasally. Voices. I love a girl. Like I love a girl with a weird voice. Like so um you. yeah, Logan like like does. her. That's true. And who's my fucking favorite? Oh God, um. Mm, we've talked about it on this podcast Fran before. Drescher is another favorite of mine yes I love Fran oh my god <laughs> dude I'm gonna sound bite that whenever you're mean to Franny I'll just play I love yes. Fran yeah oh my god the <laughs> nanny was my shit <laughs> me too oh what's oh her my name god. in uh, oh Joan Cusack I, I was gonna say her. Joan Cusack, Cusack. Yeah. Cusack. weird oh I love a weird voice bitch you talk about Joan Cusack it's so definitely much Cusack. that's because Cusack it's definitely Cusack by the way it's Cusack Cusack, Cusack. Yeah. Cusack? I yeah, don't know. Cusack. Whatever. I love her. I'm in love with her. <laughs> I love it. Joan Cusack. She's it's got a weird voice. Cusack. I just I yeah, love it. She does. I want to know. Sure. I know I've asked you this before, but is it, 
do you still love her in Shameless, even though she's like the weird mom character? I love her a little bit. Like, I don't find her like super sexy there. But I mean, she does have those weird sex scenes a lot, though. She does have some weird sex scenes, which I I don't know how I feel about. But I mean, it's not I love her in, I love her in get... School of Rock. That's like my favorite film of hers. Oh, God. I think she's great in that movie. She's really hot in that movie. She's very hot in that movie when she's yeah. like Stevie Nicks. Oh. And here's the thing, too. Like, I insert myself in every Jack Black character because I feel like that's something I can assimilate <laughs> with. And I'm like... <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, he's anyway, an old God. So anyway, um, but yeah, I love I love the way that her voice sounds. It it, it it makes me very happy. And then like eventually we're gonna review Chasing Amy, but just this little bit. So they start dating after Mall Rats, and then he finds out that she's kind of sexually promiscuous as a person. Like she's she's bisexual. A lot of people know that, and she's had like a really, we'll say active past, which is something <laughs> Good for that her. yeah exactly. He has such a big problem with, and he's so dramatic because, you know, he's like a year older than me at this point, and he's like in the 90s, so he doesn't yeah. realize. She points out to him, like, you're like an, you're an intellectual, and this is how you're acting about me being with a girl or being with multiple people. Yeah. So then as a result of his ignorance, he wrote Chasing Amy, put her in that role. She got a Golden Globe. It started her whole career. So in a weird way, it, it, it's, you know... It's it's a weird thing what just like one casting session where you don't even get the job can totally change your whole fucking life. Right. I really like her in this role too as Gwen. I feel like that was a way better fit. It also like they so they had to do so much reshooting because the original cut of the film sucks. Yeah. I was gonna I was actually thinking about that. Like I know that there is like a director's cut of mm-hmm. this film. Do you want me to kind of explain? And I've happens? heard it's pretty bad. We were kind of um, watching it prior to you guys coming over today. But. <laughs> I, I do feel like one of the things, one of my sort of criticisms of this movie, and I was saying earlier before we started this podcast, I actually don't really have like a lot of thoughts on Mallrats. Like mm-hmm. it was just, it was a movie and I watched it and liked it. I don't, I feel like I don't have like, like I usually do like a lot of thoughts, mm-hmm. but one of the thoughts I do have is that it does feel like this movie was scraped together. Remade. Almost. Yes. Like not remade, but like. It see it feels to me like there was a movie and then they took the movie and then they kind of scrambled it up and took some parts out and like put things in different places. That's yeah. exactly and, what happened. And like yeah. and maybe put in some new stuff and took out some of the old stuff and just like smushed it together of a movie. And I don't think that it's bad, but it, it, you can tell. So the original plot of the film is that they're both college students still, but that the character Brandy's dad is going to this governor's ball at the college where he's meeting up with the governor to try to get funding for his game show to for like public access. And that's why you hear about the governor's ball at random points during the normal film, even though there is no governor's ball in the movie because they couldn't reshoot those scenes. Actors had left. So the original idea was they're at this governor's ball and TS is in the play that this college is doing and he has a gun in the play. He's playing like a... Like a, you know, like a... Like a soldier. Man, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, they get up on the roof. They have this huge argument where T.S. comes off like a fucking date rapist. Oh, my God. It yeah. It is not good. He is like, you're going to fuck me on you're this gonna roof. fuck me on this roof right now. And I'm just like, eh, I miss I miss the gerbil scene from the beginning of the he's movie. Like, <laughs> he's literally like, if you don't, we're, you're going to make up for it. <laughs> it's like... Oh yeah. God. And it's it, you know that it's not how Kevin Smith wrote it just because the way the words are said like it just doesn't add up but these actors miss the fucking bar with the mm-hmm. reading of it sounded so rapey so as a result of them arguing this fake gun gets tangled in her hair it's so bad it's so bad and then he accidentally lets off us uh what is it called when a blank a blank, a blank. yeah and it scares the governor's it scares the governor's security guards and as a result, Brainy's dad jumps on her, breaks her collarbone, and then she doesn't give him funding. So now he can't hire a girl to be on the game show. Or no, no, wait, she was already going to be on the game show. It doesn't matter. But um, yeah. essentially that's why Brainy's dad hates him is because he didn't get funding through that. That's why there's oh. all this talk about the governor's ball. And then the police are looking for Brody and TS because they think that they were conspiring to kill the governor. That's the whole movie. Like during, <laughs> during the movie, that's what's going on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it the That's why also that's why the guy from Fashionable Mail doesn't like Brody cuz he thinks Brody tried to kill the governor, which is not a reason 
To not like to somebody. Li- to not like Brody. <laughs> I, mean, I guess it is. I mean, someone's like a terrorist. <laughs> oh, and there are also a really off-color joke about Syrians. Just want to throw that out there. Oh, oh another, no. It um it really highlights how bad the girl that plays Brandy is as an actress. Hey, too. she's not that bad. Uh, she's so pretty. She doesn't. She doesn't actually do a whole pretty. lot in this movie. She does. A, I, she does a lot more in the director's Yeah, and cut. I was like, and I wonder if that's why because she's just uh-huh. not that good. She's a nice face. <laughs> but, uh, um, it's really it is. So, like, if they tried to kill the governor, then like, how are the police just like? How are they just at large? Yeah, the police are looking for them the whole time. <laughs> Obviously, not well. That's, They're at their houses. No, no, but that's the point. Is like they don't go to the houses. They meet up in his car and then they go to the mall to hide out. And that's why when they're getting arrested because of TS's or Brandy's dad mm-hmm. and they get pulled out and they're like, you can't arrest us for no reason. They are, are they were arresting them for a reason, but they had to come up with a reason why they were outside. <laughs> so that's why the weed mm-hmm. shot, shot happened. And that's why the whole running and Jay and Silent Bob shit happened. They, originally, they just got arrested because they were trying to kill the governor. And so thought the government. But- uh, but then how would they uh, but then like the beginning of the movie like they're at there is, their own home there is no beginning of the movie like that it doesn't open like oh, that oh so there's a reshoot there is no the only thing that happens is Brody has the fight with Shannon Doherty where does that occur in his bedroom he finds out in his twin bed he gets he <laughs> gets out of his house he goes after um I can't remember the girl's name what was it Brenda Brandy no Brandy is the no. other oh. girlfriend Damn it. Didn't you look What's this shit name? up? Renee. Renee. Thank you. You're so good. Good job. Thank I just you. heard his Gold name star. before. Gold star for you. Um, <laughs> nice. He gets Three a- Cracker Barrel stars. <laughs> oh my God. You had to be around earlier for that to be funny, but oh, just know Jesus that it is. Jesus Christ. Um, he gets out of the basement to try to like chase after her. And then he sees all these cop cars oh, at TS's I house. I see. And then also there's another thing too. They never show TS's car. So in one of the scenes in the film, they go, when he's giving the 15-year-old girl the car keys to go grab her, her child porn tape, they, <laughs> it's factual. Um, she says it's the yellow Volkswagen. Well, casting and, and props couldn't find a yellow Volkswagen, so it's a tan Volkswagen, but they couldn't redo the shot where he said yellow Volkswagen because you can clearly see him say it on his face so they couldn't ADR it. Nice. So a lot of inconsistencies happen as a result. I kind of yeah. love the inconsistencies of this. Movie well, the thing though. is, you don't. It doesn't. It really. They did a good job mummifying yeah. and Frankensteining it because that you don't notice that much when you but watch it. it. Yeah, like yeah. My first watch through, I didn't. It see doesn't it. like make the movie not make sense. Actually, from what you've just told me, it probably makes it make a little more sense. Yeah, I, <laughs> I agree. I feel like this but, version makes more but sense. There are times when you can tell that, oh, yeah. like. They kind of did a little smushing. They did a little cutting and pasting. Like, uh, you know, another thing is a lot of the stuff with like the game show is like totally twisted around. Like they had a lot of real live audience reactions to stuff, Mm -hmm. but they had to fake audience reaction a scene where Brandy says the girl who's supposed to be here died today. And then you hear a fake audience reaction because they couldn't get the real audience back to reshoot that part. (laughs) So so they had to have, yeah, I know it's so crazy. You don't pick up on it, though. I mean, I, I feel like for a kid, and he is a kid, let's be clear. When Kevin Smith made this in 1995, he was me. <laughs> uh, he did a pretty good job with it, but... So, I guess my question is, did he, like, present the director's cut, and then the studio was, like... It was a mixture. He kept saying that something... He felt like the beginning was incredibly boring, and it <laughs> is. So he said, I don't know what to do about this. And they're like, well, you better figure something out because we gave him five million to make this movie. And so he's like, okay. Uh, and then he figured something out. Um, yeah. But I mean, it doesn't change the fact that I think a lot of the best stuff was still in that original cut. I feel like it still was a great script. I feel like just the beginning and then the reason they're running around the mall was the weak part. And that's what they took care of. But I love the three nippled fortune teller scene. That is, so, I, I was going to yeah. say that that was by, by far my favorite <laughs> scene in the movie. Oh, and Stan Lee is so cute because you remember when he goes and he tells Brody all this stuff about love and you need to be in love and like T.S. said that he like sent him essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Stan accepted to do the movie because he liked, you know, like what people were saying about Kevin Smith saying he was a fun guy to work with. Plus back then nobody was asking Stan Lee to be in movies. So he shows up on set and then he reads the script and he goes, well, I would never say any of this stuff because I love my wife. So I never lost her. 
Mm. I love my wife like ridiculously. I can't do this part. I'm sorry. Wait, so he was supposed mm-hmm. to say like a bunch of like shit. No, no. So the stuff he said is in the movie, right? Yeah. About him losing. Yeah, that is the original thing, but he didn't want to do that because he's like, I didn't lose the love of my life and I never wanted to feel like even for a second I might have. Like he was that Aww. intense. So Kevin wrote in a part at the end where right at the end, TS catches him and goes, oh, thanks for doing that for me. Which I kind of like. And so me that, too. Him, yeah. that's the only reason like Stan was like, I'm not doing the movie unless you fix that part because my wife can never think for a second that Stan Lee doesn't love his wife. Aww. Adorable. That's is she cute. still alive? Is his wife still yes. alive? Yes, she's Hi. still alive. Um, oh, I cry. And, like, uh, do you think that she ever like thinks about that? Oh, Probably. I'm sure. He said it's his favorite movie he was ever in. That's really cute. And then if you've ever like, seen Captain Marvel, oh. his cameo, he's reading the Mallrat script on the bus. That's fun. Really? I like that. Aww. Yeah, that's good cute. stuff. Um, like, oh my God. I yeah, miss yeah, yeah. Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, and then there is another kind of attached story with this. There's this known producer named Jim Jacks. I mentioned him earlier. Mm-hmm. He's produced all the Scorpion King movies. Uh, he produced Days and Confused. Uh, it's a total cult classic. Um, but he always said... Wait, what's Days and Confused? No, I'm just oh kidding. My- I, was about to- <laughs> I was just playing. You can't do that to me. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, and that's the reason why Ben Affleck was cast in this movie as yeah. well as one of the London twins. I, I love Ben Affleck in this movie. Yes. I think he's great. I think he's gross. Yes. Which we'll talk about Chasing Amy and how Mallrats got basically made Ben Affleck's career a, a different time. I love I love the Ben Affleck moment at the end where <laughs> it oh, shows the, him in the prison hand. and the little the little hand with yeah, the love over his love. knuckles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, we love a good 90s prison rape joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I love it. I don't I mean, even that's care. just what we were doing in the it 90s. Was, it was exactly. the 90s. Society. We were... And you know, uh, I feel like I feel like Kevin Smith was probably the only person in the 90s who turned a homophobia joke and flipped it on its head where he called the person homophobic. You know what I'm talking about? Where he goes, he goes, I saw you kissing a guy backstage and he's like, I'm not gay. He's like, what? You're a fucking homophobe. Then? Yeah, that was like that my does favorite. not happen in the that 90s. That was like my, right. one of my favorite scenes too. <laughs> It's especially so especially because like it's coming from, from Jay. And yeah. It's like y'all are in love. <laughs> it's so good. Like, I'm um, still thinking about that prison scene. I I'm very upset about it. I don't <laughs> think I don't think it was supposed to be like a prison rape scene. I, I mean, I don't think it was. was. It yeah, was that's definitely a, that's supposed. A prison, to- they say the whole time in prison you're gonna get. Also, that's a great reincorporated joke. Uh, he wants to fuck my girlfriend in a really uncomfortable spot. Like what? Like the back of a Volkswagen? Uh, yeah, that was really <laughs> funny. <laughs> Every other scene, the back of a Volkswagen. Yeah, it was very funny. Oh my god, so good! And then when Ben was talking, I mean, granted, terrible scene, but when he's having sex with the girl and he keeps talking about being one of the new kids on the block and telling him to call her Donnie and shit yeah. like that, fucking hilarious! I mean, funny like, it fun. was really funny, but also again, something he was up when she's fifteen. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's, that's her yeah. experiment. She made a lot of money ah. off of that. But again, that's like such a weird. Uh, it's like such a weird character. Like it's such a like weird, not in a bad way, just like a, just like. She's got that irreverence yeah, that, she, that like Kevin Smith characters have. It's just like, what a weird person. She reminds me of um, like kind of like Julianne Moore's character in Big Lebowski. Like just kind of just yeah. wild and strange and weird, but also right, kind of like, fucking okay. hilarious. <laughs> like it's just nothing to her. She's like, I'm just doing this to write a book. Like you're also, a fucking loser. <laughs> also like the fact that... um. <laughs> like like when he tells her to get her his car and like she's like I don't have a license. <laughs> it's really like, funny. I don't care, just go. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Jim Jacks anyway. Uh, so Jim Jacks was a great producer, even though he worked on some bad movies. But he was known as being like a great guy, and he always had a business card that would say his upcoming films on it, and he always put Mallrats too. Even though Kevin said, "Well, we'll never make another one," and he's like, "No, you'll make another one," because hmm. he hmm. loved. He said it was the best and most fun movie he ever worked on. And when Jim Jacks passed away in 2014, Aww. I know uh, Kevin Smith came up with the idea to do a Mallrats too, and all the cast that was in it, they had um, they had a trend going on Twitter where they would post like a an M two, and like everybody who was originally working on the film the first time was willing to come back and do a second one. 
Even um, Ben Affleck? Even, even ben though Affleck. he's been like a... Well, him and him and Kevin reconnected, so... I wasn't sure if that was by 2014 or not. No, it was pretty... Yeah, he, he, was, okay. he was on it, yeah. Um, and uh, they were going to make it, and then they had a whole script written called Mall Brats, where it was about them... The main characters in the movie are kind of running their own stores and shit now um, in the mall. And now there's new kids who are like, malls are fucking stupid, and they go through and they fuck shit up, like Harley mm-hmm. Quinn Smith, Kevin Smith's daughter, daughter and... Um, Hey, you know, uh, Lily Depp. Yeah, Lily yeah. Rose Lily Depp Rose and stuff. Depp. Mm-hmm. And the script was really good. Everybody loved it. And people were so excited to work on it. Um, the best part is Ethan Supply was going to work in the gym in the mall and talk about like the day I saw the sailboat is the day I turned it around and shit. There was like, a whole oh, thing. My god. oh my God. Oh my God. So fucking funny. Um, but Universal was only willing to give it to them if they could get a big person to buy the rights for the show. And to buy the rights for what? To buy the rights for Mall Brats to say that they're willing to pay money for it. Because mm. Universal owns the, you know, the only movie that Universal owns of Kevin Smith's is Mall Rats, and that's because it was a, a year before Miramax was doing their shit. Mm. So they couldn't find like somebody to invest a shit ton of money. But the Netflix wanted to do it, but they weren't willing to invest like a shit ton of money, so they can't make it. That's so that's lame. really sad. Yeah. So they uh, they did a uh, reading in Hollywood for like a memorial forum where the whole cast just read the new script. Oh, that's cute. Oh, yeah. my God. What right? a fun little fact. Yeah, it's good stuff. Why uh, are all these facts getting me today, guys? <laughs> I oh told you I had a God. lot to talk about mall rats. It, it may be just like a Ugh. dumb poop comedy from the 90s, but for people who are like, especially like indie film comic book nerds, Kevin Smith is our Jesus. You know <laughs> what I mean? He's the guy that everybody wants to be, um, and he... And he totally changed cinema like they don't they wouldn't have made stupid movies where people were like making butt comedies with just dialogue like people always wanted like the practical comedy and like slipping on a banana peel and shit i feel like a lot of that was changed with how successful clerks was and then how successful his later movies were and chasing amy is like an actually artistic film so yeah i mean and like i yeah this movie is in like some ways it's just kind of like a dumb comedy but mm-hmm. i'd also don't have a lot about it that i dislike yeah i mean and yeah and like and like i'm like now that we are sitting here talking about it i'm thinking about like the the like specific funny moments Mm -hmm. like so so yeah i think that like as like a whole movie as like a whole overarching plot maybe there's not a whole lot there Mm -hmm. but there are these just like individually like very golden moments yes that are really Mm -hmm. good there's so many quotes the chocolate covered pretzel the tell him steve dave which is like one of the biggest quotes they have. There's a podcast called "Tell Him Steve Dave" with the guys from the movie. They're nerdy comic book guys. Mm-hmm. Oh, when um, I was looking up the um, cast, mm-hmm. Renee. Did you know they like the character Renee? Mm-hmm. Her last name's Mosier. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. Know Scott that. Mosier is like yeah. Kevin Smith's like big producer friend. They produce yeah. everything together. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just thought that was a little. And then funny fun tidbit. fact for Bridget. I love this one specifically for yeah. Bridget. Um, your boy was almost in this movie. Which boy? Seth Green. Oh my God. <laughs> so Jay, Jay had only done one movie before and that was Clerks and it's because Kevin could sit there and like feed him the lions and like pinch him when he was fucking up, you know, because he sat, sat stood next to him the whole movie. And Jay had a lot more to do in Mallrats and he, he kept freezing up on set. So they Aww. were going to replace him with Seth Green. No. It would just not have been right. He, he told Jay like, dude, when we do this scene where you're running around and like you're running through the mall away from the cop and you stop at the table. You always freeze up when you're ready to tell a joke. Just tell any joke you want and don't freeze up. Tell <laughs> whatever joke you want. So he tells this joke. Man, that cop was faster than Walt Flanagan's dog, which is their real friend who plays one of the nerds. Yeah. And that's that was his saving grace. So whenever mm-hmm. Jay would like get nervous about a scene, like, just remember Walt Flanagan's dog. That's like one of the things they do. That's like their coaching moment. That's, that's so, so cute. cute. Mm-hmm. So, Aww. yeah, almost Seth Green. I love them. We were watching. It wouldn't have been right with Seth Green. That just fucking weird. That just reminded me. We were watching um some comedy special that Kevin Smith did, like an older one, I think. Well, no, no, no. We were watching Silent But Deadly, and 10 minutes after he got done shooting, he had the heart attack that almost killed him. Oh, oh my that God. That's I'm, crazy. Is that the one I'm thinking oh, of? Holy where shit. He, talk, he was talking about how um Jay bought 
a house in his same neighborhood and they go and walk yeah. their dogs together. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so now if you drive down that neighborhood, you can just you see, see Jay, Jay and Silent Bob walking a miniature, what was it? A miniature Dachshund and, uh, and a, and a pit bull together. That's <laughs> adorable. <laughs> who has Also, who? why are those the, the perfect the, dogs? The Dachshund is, is Kevin Smith's his name, Shecky. And then Shaggy. the pit bull is Jay's. That's adorable. Of course, I like, like I knew in my mind, like I could just picture that's that. That's what so I, how I pictured it as well. But hmm. like, I wanted to confirm, you know? I love that. Like he said, like sometimes he'll hear people go, Jay and Silent Bob walk dogs. Yeah. That's so cute. And um, one of the scenes uh, on the movie where Jay was reassured that he was doing a good job by everybody, like everybody clapped for him when he finished the scene was the kitty scene. And I love that scene. I was thinking uh, about that. It always that was such a good scene. It always sticks with him. So what in, in re explain, you scene? know, when they're like, I know just the guys that do and they walk up and Jay's like hitting the glass. And <gasps> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, in the scene, Brody approaches Jay and says, should we call you Logan weapon X? And he goes, no, call me Wolverine. He named his kid Logan after that, like moment in Aww. his life. Oh, oh my I got God. facts for days. <laughs> You do. That's I feel so like cute. you just keep but going. But the best part about that scene is when he tells Silent Bob to like talk to the cats. He just say, says a little. Say some of the kitties. He's just. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going to be the only thing he said the entire movie, but yeah, I was he, mistaken. He, he made a VHS player out of his mom's dildo and shit in fourth grade. <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh he's like, he's a, he's a tech wizard. It's so funny because Jay is like so quippy and like fast that yeah. like you don't think about him like actually fucking up you yeah know? right yeah when in r real life they're total opposites jay's like yeah. a silent yeah. dude and kevin will never shut the fuck up till <laughs> right? the day he dies i love that and um yeah like you know like what were you saying sorry no what were you saying um <laughs> like when i saw him on degrassi because he he's on degrassi <laughs> yes Bridget he is degrassi i was trying to figure out how to work this in <laughs> how to work degrassi there's a degrassi, degrassi jacket in this movie there is and it's uh it is worn by shannon doherty but it's actually um brody's brody's, brody's jacket. yeah but when i saw because kevin smith goes on to degrassi and he like shoots him because he movie. loves degrassi right like he's yeah a gigantic fan of degrassi i love that he said I, in, in middle school he wore like the jean jacket and the jeans and stuff there's a picture out there of it it's really funny i love <laughs> that i during quarantine i've kind of rekindled my um my obsession preteen obsession with I want, Tarantino I want, all quarantine. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> I want I really want Bridget to do like a solo Degrassi podcast where it's just her yeah. talking no. at length all about jokes Degrassi. Aside, nope. Never mind. We could do that one day maybe. Who knows? Who's to say? Um, <laughs> well, like, like, who's to say? Who's to say? Um, Actually his name's Artie. <laughs> <laughs> But like when I saw Kevin Smith on Degrassi, I was like, this is Logan. This is hell. Yeah. Like that makes me feel better than any compliment I've ever had. And like you also just the way you that you talk. Smile. Yeah. <laughs> like now. the way that you like you talk and he talks He's are so similar hmm. in like the best way. I and praise the man. I, I go to him <laughs> for everything. Like you kiss the ground. He walks on like, you know, it's just it's true, but it's really, Madison's got Tarantino where she both spits and kisses the ground. He walks on. Right. <laughs> we yeah. Have <laughs> we have a complicated relationship. And then I'm that way with Kevin Smith because nothing like, I, I know maybe I'm, maybe I'm speaking out of turn, but even in a movie like this, which I feel like is pretty, a basic movie it's not like it's like insanely well written but there's just like a fun warmth yeah and he knows how to capture people's nostalgia even if they haven't seen the movie he just has so many references where someone can attach to like you were like the degrassi jacket or franny was was on about the um what the was brenda it? moment the, the brenda moment yeah exactly i fucking love that moment it's just everything like everybody has something to attach to with it yeah yeah i think yeah, I think that like my Quentin Tarantino relationship is very similar to your relationship with, yeah. with Kevin. Except the good thing is mine dude's not problematic. Which <laughs> yeah, is no, I mean, yeah. I, I got out lucky. Mine, mine, and, mine and Q's Facebook relationship status is it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, I mean like, and I think, and I, I think I've talked about this on both um, the Reservoir Dogs podcast and on the Pulp Fiction podcast and probably will again on the Jackie Brown podcast. I'm on every later. Tarantino podcast. But do. it's just <laughs> like, like to, to sit down and watch a Tarantino movie is just like, you just get like a nice, like little warm feeling and you're mm -hmm. like, yeah, this is good. This is, this is where we're supposed to be. 
it, they're 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 the type of directors where their personality and their like I guess you could say just overall their taste is so entangled with every bit of cinema they make. Yeah. Like there is no way you can watch a Kevin Smith film. Even even Red State, which is super weird or or, or Tusk. Um oh, no. you know it's yeah. a Kevin Smith film. Same thing with Tarantino. There is no mistaking it. It's because they have that flair. And it's really yeah. funny that they were actually they're kind of good friends. Like they show each other each other's movies beforehand and they both praised Michael Parks relentlessly. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's funny too, um, like in so, in in as much that Bridget thinks that Kevin Smith is like you, or that you're like Kevin Smith, probably because you spend so much time like with his movies, absolutely, and so it's become a part of your personality. Like similar to me, I spent a summer or so like wearing Hawaiian shirts all the time because like that's just <laughs> and also sunglasses, and sunglasses because that's just what we were doing. And I feel like and I feel like Tarantino movies have definitely influenced my personality in in some way, shape, or form. And I, also your style choices for a while. Again, <laughs> I had, you had I to mean, wear yeah, contacts I, just to make it happen. I still wear. I still love a good Hawaiian shirt. I still rock one. She does. I had the actual trench coat for a while. The green nice, trench coat. Nice. So. Oh wow! I just remember like the highlight of your life was when he called you um, handsome. Handsome. He called you handsome. When I almost cried. He said, show. "From me to that handsome motherfucker in the plaid over there," and I went me, and he went yeah, and I was like. Oh. Just screaming, <laughs> crying, just oh my god. That's cute. One thing I love about Kevin Smith is just like even even like the not main characters, like the side characters are just so well written. Like They're and very, I like how quippy everything is and just the fucking dialogue. Like, yeah, everybody gets their mm-hmm. moment. Everybody yeah. gets to have their little Everybody <gasps> gets their time to shine. I and, also No you got. I also feel like the um characters are very fleshed out. Yeah. They're not just like the ones like, that aren't are like so hyperbolic. Like, how could you? Like, he, exactly. they're, they're meant to be like, right. Of course, the fashionable male character is supposed to be so relentlessly. I mean, there's a reason he works at fashionable male. He's supposed to be pure testosterone, a dick yeah. on a stick. Right. That was right. the idea that he's just fucking just a uh, walking hard on. Like that was the terms that they were using. Yeah, and oh. like same with um, what's her name, Brandy's dad. Yeah, exactly. Like he's just ridiculous. He's just like the absolute like hates youth, hates fun, hates that Merle. Yeah, Merle from Walking Dead. <laughs> Logan looked at me during this and said, "Which character is more evil that he's played, Merle or, or this? Mr. Svenning?" And I said, "Mr. Svenning for sure." <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, do we have to do the thing with this where we like what character are we? I in also, I, I was gonna say that, but let me say one thing first. I, I yeah. also want to talk about favorite scenes before we do okay, that too. Yeah, definitely. Okay. But you can go ahead and say your one thing. I was going to say, you were talking about the fleshed outness of the characters. The other great thing is even though Kevin Smith will recast new people, every single character from Clerks to Jay and Silent Bob reboot are all in the same universe. Yeah. Right. So there's multiple that. Ben Affleck characters mm-hmm. that run Tons. into each other sometimes. Mul- like there's a There's multiple Jason Lee characters that run into each other. And he, the reason why we know he writes out his main characters really well is because all you need to do is listen to the character and you'll know whether it's Brody or whether it's Bruce or whether it's Ben Affleck's character in Dogma or Ben Affleck's character in Fashionable Male. Yeah. Because he yeah. wrote them so distinctly, you don't, they, you don't need somebody to spell it out for you. It's like, this one's Brody. You don't need that because he wrote them so perfectly to just exemplify like a stereotype in a way. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what I love about the movies. You're definitely going to... When we do Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, you're going to be like, oh my God, everyone is back. <laughs> Every character that's in all those films come back. Was there um, a Kevin Smith movie before... I mean, like there was obviously, but there was a, a um, Jay and Silent Bob movie before this. Clerks. 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 Mm-hmm. Got it. Cool. I just but that wasn't did like, not know. It wasn't like their movie. No, wait, but they were Jay and Silent Bob. Right, yeah. Wait, wait. Are we going to... Talk about the the little Degrassi movie they did. We should the the little clips that we see of it. I want to review. I'm pretty sure we get like a whole episode of like what their movie is. I want to also review um the Clerks animated series at some point in some way. Nice because they they made a Simpsons type series that has six episodes and it's actually really fucking funny. Like really funny. It's like got there's this ongoing joke about Matt Damon and Ben Affleck and it's it's so good. Mm. Um, but yeah, let's talk about favorite scenes. Yeah, I just, I really like, and I won't, and I haven't shut up about this scene because I just really like it. I really like the scene with Joey, Lauren Adams and um, 
Brody and TS. So Gwen, Brody, and TS when they're in the fitting room. Well, not in the fitting room. They're in not the, in the fitting yeah, room. Yeah, in the store, <laughs> and she's just changing. And, like, there's so much going on. But, like, you're not even focused on that. You're just focused on what they're saying because the dialogue is so fucking good. And I just love the character Gwen. Like, how she, like, went out of her way to, like, go talk to um, fucking Brandy and shit. Like, she's just a G. I feel like Kevin Smith really writes good female characters. He, I think he, I think he can, especially like, I don't know if this is the best example. Well, of that, I just, I but know. It is, they are good characters. Yeah. I'm not saying they're not, but especially post chasing Amy and on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think there's an adulthood that kind of came with that movie mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that, and especially, especially after you had a daughter. Yeah. He really tries to at least somewhat respect yeah. the fact that he doesn't get the full perspective. Well, I, I think in this, even though he was so young, like this is a 25 year old guy in the 90s and he wrote a, he wrote decently respectable like what, female characters. I mean, the 15 year old was a little rough, but everything else was good. I think it was, it was good that he wrote a very promiscuous character yeah. that didn't apologize for being exactly as she said. Right. Yeah. Um, and like she was doing it for her own reasons. And, then, and like it was very obvious too, which I appreciated that like, Ben Affleck was wrong for right yeah. that exactly. Child. Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. The that whole movie hate fucks Ben Affleck yes. for sure. <laughs> um, like even right down to the prison rip scene at the end. Uh, I just I yeah. really I really like the flow of like the uh like the um scene where they're in that store with Gwen Brody and T S. I like the flow of that scene a lot. I think I already said that my favorite scene was when they go to see the fortune teller. Yeah. <laughs> that, that I love great. that scene Bridget so much. Bridget didn't even realize there's a third nipple at first. You remember and that? I literally <laughs> gasped when she took her shirt. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, what the fuck are they? I was like, like, Oh, oh. Yeah, like you did the zoom. You're like, Oh geez. I think I probably <laughs> felt really And then yeah. when she takes it off, when she takes her third nipple off, dying. insane. I love that shit. I also just, I really actually like the game show scene a lot. Me too. Me um, too. Especially everything that Jason Lee says in that game. Like it just is, like he's consistently very funny. And I love yeah. that. And he, then the other guy, what's his name? Brian, or you're talking about TS or Brian O'Halloran's character, Gil. Gil. Yeah. So Brian O'Halloran plays Dante in the first movie and then he recast him as Gil, but the way he gets away with it right off the bat is the character Dante in Clerks is named Dante Hicks. Mm-hmm. So he names his Gil character Gil Hicks. Mm-hmm. And then you'll see that repeated throughout all the movies. Whenever you cast him in something, the last name is always Hicks of that character. I love that. So the, I love that there's so many of these men. There's a going theory that he has like octuplet twins. Like they're all just a bunch <laughs> nice. of twins because they're all I, around the same age. I love it. I so love good. that. But um, yeah, uh, the other thing is too that I really enjoyed, and this is like not necessarily a scene, but I just wanted to mention this part, is when you notice that there's a tiny little Dixie cup that Jason Lee's character carries around the whole time filled with Pepsi, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I. That's based off of Kevin Smith's real life. His friend Walt Flanagan, they would go into New York City because they lived in Jersey, and they'd spend a whole day there looking at comics, and Walt just had one Dixie cup filled with Pepsi <laughs> that he didn't finish till the very last second. That's hilarious. Like, he was always fascinated by that. I love that. <laughs> Could never be me. And apparently his dog was just... Walt Flanagan's dog. Fast and Walt Flanagan's dog, yeah. I love that. Yeah, if you ever watch the show Comic Book Men, it's got all the dudes that were his friends, and they run a comic book shop, and it's like Pawn Stars. It's really funny. That's fun. That sounds amazing. It's also got it Kevin is. Smith in it, too. Um, My favorite, I think, would be... I don't know if it's a scene so much as like the monologue at the very beginning. Like it's so well written and it just made me laugh and I had a great time. Yeah. yeah. Fun <laughs> story about that monologue. I have another oh story. <laughs> I is was, it based on a real life event? No. Well, yes, it is based on a real life event. But what? Not the way you think. Don't worry. Uh. Um, I was trying out for a play. Oh, okay. And I wanted the monologue to be like super edgy because I ever everybody you knew because this is 2000 like nine maybe maybe 2010 so everybody's doing why so serious everywhere all the fuck right, boy yes. kids are doing why right. so serious i'm like you know what we remember this i'm times. actually edgy i'm actually edgy i'm gonna do something edgy as fuck i'm gonna talk about a gerbil in somebody's ass and then <laughs> I, I didn't spit my coffee i didn't get the part and they yelled at me because <laughs> i censored nothing i was right. like but uh what and then what was really funny though is my teacher um Mr. Wazik, I told him this story later. He's like, you should have told the plane scene monologue. 
<laughs> you know the one with the game show where all the all the electric in the plane goes down every starts jerking off. So like, you should do that monologue. Yeah, that's a that's yeah. a good moment. <laughs> so did he come or not? You just don't say some things in public. I love that shit so much. What was I your forgot about that monologue? It's so good. I don't know if I could do a favorite scene. I think I just like concepts that were realized. Like the Pepsi thing is just so like homegrown for me that I'm like yeah. that's something I'm gonna do in a movie one day. So that's something I really light up to. I guess if I had to pick something, I really like the scene where they first get to the dirt mall and that just feels like so natural. Like the way yeah. everybody's acting, like we've been, you know, Brody's been here a million times. TS never comes here. He feels awkward. He's putting on a clerk's hat. He's, he's feeling like all these people are dirty and everybody's like, Hey, what's up? You know, and hmm. all that shit. It, he's yelling at people with comic books. You should have a board to this comic book. You fuck, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then he finally has the first admission of like, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Don't listen to me. <laughs> like, that's such a great scene for me. Yeah. And then right after, of course, you get the fucking three nipple lady scene, which is awesome. Yes. This movie gives me a lot of nostalgia because um, when I was like 13, 14, my parents would just drop me off at the mall with my friend with like $20 and we just stay there all day. I thought I you were going to tell this. the boo-boo kitty fuck story for a second. I was oh, like, oh, God. God. What? <laughs> <laughs> all right let me preface Different this talk. no we should do it now okay. we should do it now let's just tell the story now because when we have when we actually review jay and silent bob strike back we'll not have a shortage of things to talk about you're right so, um then in jay and silent bob strike back <laughs> jay is awkward and this girl's like quit calling me a stupid hoe and a dumb bitch because he likes her and he doesn't know how to talk to girls yeah. he's, re- he's the dumbest person ever he's <laughs> like he's like totally backwards a total child yeah and um <laughs> he goes what kind of nickname do you like what about tits and she's like no he's like what about boo boo kitty fuck <laughs> and she's like that's better he's like all right boo boo kitty fuck now tell your life story so i never like i grew up very sheltered until like age like 13 is when i stopped being as sheltered and um you know just from a small town and stuff and <laughs> I was dating this real trashy guy. At How like, old were you? Oh, God. I was like 14, 13. How old was he? Um, so he lied about his age. and turns out he was <gasps> a lot older than he was. Um, How old? Well, I was told he was like 16. Turns out he was like 19. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah. That man is a pedophile. Uh, like was, he, was he saying, the call, was he <laughs> asking you to call him new kids on the block people? Right? Or? I'm, <laughs> I'm contacting the FBI as we speak. <laughs> We have right. to go and fill out this form. Goodbye. We got, we got to contact Agent Hodge at the BAU right now. But so like. Oh. What? I, I was trying to do the. I was like, you know, goodbye. And then like oh. I was trying to put. Why did you back off? You should have. Dude, commit. I couldn't do, do it. Do it right I now. Do it right now. It's this one. It's that one? Yes. <laughs> there you go. The FBI is open you. an investigation. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can do it. <laughs> Oh man, I wish I had police so, sirens. So this is always <laughs> so this has always stuck with me because okay. So like it was just like this dude I met on like the internet and we like went to the mall as like Bridget our dates and that. stuff. I right? do. Uh, we went to the mall as like our dates. Well, he like told me to put his name in my phone as Boo Boo Kitty Fuck. And I had I didn't <laughs> Right, obviously you didn't get the reference. I didn't get the reference at all. At all fucking all and my dad <laughs> <laughs> this bitch just exploded right here that, she's that gone means. she's gone she's gone she's dead <laughs> for all of you playing that drinking game um <laughs> i think you might have died <laughs> my uh, my poor father <laughs> Oh my god! And, and like my dad is like my Logan always says he looks like Bill Clinton, like he is just a white. Don't d- out me here, <laughs> Rob. I love you. He doesn't listen. <laughs> I don't think he knows I have a podcast, but he's just a very like white dad. <laughs> and <laughs> she can't even talk. She's she having an asthma attack. She's dying, dude. Like she's di- what do we do? Do she's do dying. Anyone knows Guys, CPR? Guys, we have to go to the hospital. We're gonna, we'll talk to you later. <laughs> but he um, saw on my phone and he goes, who is Boo Boo Kitty Fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me who this Boo Boo Kitty Fuck is. That's so funny. And you were like, oh, that's just my 19 year old boyfriend. <laughs> Which he knew because that dude came over and he got caught <gasps> stealing my underwear. <laughs> what? How does your dad not 
not know this man was 19. I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I'm, I'm, oh my I'm, God. I am in shock. Your people's childhood stress me out. I'm, I'm overstimulated. I can't think. I'm overstimulated. I'm sweating from that story. I feel that, like even wasn't, that wasn't even what I was going to tell. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, sorry. I feel like Franny and I have very similar, but also very different. Like, she actually met the, the p- people she talked to on the internet. I don't recall if I ever did. But she didn't talk to, like, 40. Like, oh, God. No. You know what I mean? It wasn't 40-year-olds, yeah. Bridget. It wasn't I mean, guys I don't on know their if, 401k. I don't know if they were 40-year-olds. Oh, I thought you did. I'm sorry. Um, no, I mean, I don't I don't know if they were. I'm they might have been. in the past. I'm sorry. I can't I mean, anymore. I was on Meet Me, so it could have been anyone. It's a double entendre. What? what? Meet Me. It's a double entendre. What, what does that mean? We'll let it go. <laughs> the kids out there explaining in the comments. <laughs> I feel I w- so stupid. I don't know. Bridget, I meat. also was meat. a mall rat. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Ah. But yeah, don't, Bridget kids doesn't don't use know. that app. Bridget doesn't know much don't about use that meat. App, kids. She's just so innocent over here. Like, what are you talking about? She, she don't know about meat. It's fine. <laughs> Kobe beef? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Where is the beef? Yeah. Um, Where? I smell like beef. I smell god like damn it. I <laughs> smell oh my like god, it is bee. hotter than a motherfucker in here. It's smell like bee. I'm sweating like a whore in church. I told y'all. Well, here's Anyways. the thing. We, when we get back from our break, we'll do a quick test run to see if you can pick up the AC on the on the microphones. And I think you can. Fuck me. You sure? Also yeah, we it. tested it the other day. We can always just like run it, it during no, our break. No, I think that we should just go out there, and cool down, and then come mm-hmm. back in here and sweat it out again. Okay. Um, All right. Should we rate it now then? Uh, we didn't tell people who we were. We oh, okay. That's yeah, part of our thing. Yeah, we did, didn't we? No, no we no. didn't. Not yet. I think I'm. You're Brody. Brody. And I'm TS. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant who we were. You're like, Brody. I'm TS. There is that's no. That's the dynamic. There is and it's no fine. question about it. Literally no question about it. That's that's just the dynamic that yeah, we've got going on. But it's I mean, I, I have Brody isms, but I feel like I'm, I'm definitely more of a TS and you're definitely more of a Brody. Yeah, I, that's how I feel as well. Mm-hmm. I want to say I'm Silent Bob. Because I'm gay. Because I'm gay? <laughs> and I'm quiet. Oh, God. They have the cutest, they have the cutest little moment in that movie where uh, he pulls out his, his bat, his batarang or his bat gun or whatever the fuck it's called. It's grappling hook. And he goes, where do you get these wonderful toys? And he just kisses them on the cheek. It's the cutest thing oh, in the world. So cute. Yeah, yeah I'm, silent. Said, I'm Silent Bob because I'm gay. <laughs> and I'm quiet. And quiet. That's so I mean, cute. like, okay. if you, if oh. I'm not on a podcast, I mean, obviously, if you've listened to earlier podcasts, I'm less chatty, but I've had coffee today, so. Franny is absolutely. Bridget, Bridget, when she's had like a cup of coffee, is like a different human. I am. I, I really I'm, am. I just need to start drinking Bridget again. Bridget came honestly. out of work last night and she was like, hey, how's it going? And nor- and she had drank some coffee. And normally when she gets also, off work, I pulled she pulled a says, double yesterday. And normally when she gets off work, she says, Ugh, I want McDonald's. <laughs> yes. Just McDonald's. Oh, yeah. Where never, is he? Never McDonald's. It's I McDonald's. Need, I need to get to that farm. <laughs> she's like, I want a McDonald's. <laughs> And, and she always orders the same she thing. She comes out she she's gets, like, yeah, yeah, if you, yeah. If you want to be Bridget, you can go to McDonald's and get a number two and then get your dip your fries in mustard. Like a weirdo. Ew. Mm, then the honey mustard sometimes. Sometimes honey mustard. Most times. Most times just mustard. Anyways. <laughs> she's fucking weird. I don't know, guys. There's any mustard I've stands out there. I don't know if I can accept that about you. I've accepted a lot about you. I don't know if I can accept that. She dips those fries in mustard like it's not a big deal. You mustard stands real... sound off in the comments. There will be no one. <laughs> there won't be a soul. There will not be a single person. Colonel were... Mustard's like, that's just nasty. I'm not touching that. Like Colonel you... Mustard. You were about to say who you think I am because I've got two in mind. So I want to hear your opinion okay, first. You're either Renee. Yeah. Or Willem. Willem? <laughs> yeah. Or Willem. Who's Willem? Oh. Schooner. Sailboat. Fuck you. I was going to say I'm Re- I was going to say I'm Renee or Gwen. You feel like I'm a uh, Willem. I don't know if I'd want to say I'm Gwen well, necessarily. Well, not, not in the bad, like not in the hoary part of Gwen, but like in like oh. the. In the capricious part of Gwen. <laughs> Promiscuous. <laughs> I, I do I do get that Willem vibe a little bit because I feel like you like focus in on things sometimes. And when, you, and when it doesn't go well, it I, I feel like you would definitely f- I do a, flip out. Yeah. You're right. Mm-hmm. 
Sorry. He said, ah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I definitely, like, I go back and forth whether maybe we're both kind of Brodies because I, because I do think I'm TS in the sense of, like, I don't know. I feel like I'm this sound off in the comments. I feel like I'm a pretty good guy. Could be wrong. Um, but I definitely have like the extreme nerd obsessions that Brody has. I feel like so I'm a good person. I feel I didn't say you weren't a good person. I'm just saying I feel like no, I'm kind I know. of a mix. I, mean, I feel like I have that I have that that aspect as well. So maybe I we're guess. just like a mixture. Maybe we're just just two birdies in a in a world of <laughs> <laughs> We're just two Brodies out here floating. God damn it, guys. Nobody wants to listen to this anymore. I, I don't. I don't I'm agree with you. I'm enjoying it. I'm having a great time. <laughs> I almost died. Just, I was like, I had Dr. Pepper. All right, guys. I believe now has come the time where we tell people what we think of it with a rating. <laughs> Oof. I'm going to say. Oh. <laughs> Did I just hit Yes, hello? Word? Who is this? See, she's a different <laughs> fucking person. Welcome, welcome to the party. She's like, I'm going to say. <laughs> Why are you, why are you I'm a, you're Bridget, but you're the misspelling of Bridget in the comments. You're a totally different you're Bridget right Bridget. now. You're the other Bridget everybody keeps yo, talking guys, about. Yo, guys, you really yo, yo. should start giving me coffee. Like I should need, I need to start oh drinking God. coffee again. You did not just say yo, yo. unironically. Yo, so I'm gonna be. go die now. Goodbye. <laughs> you said a nine out of. <laughs> All right, you now, you're, a, now you're getting a little too capricious with that. <laughs> you, said a, you said a nine out of ten? Yeah. That's I very really, high. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm going to go even higher. I'm doing ten out of ten, baby. Wow. I love this movie. I, I love... I, I like this word that Madison used before. It's a fun little romp. I like that <laughs> phrase. It definitely is a fun little romp. I love this movie. It's got instant rewatchability. Right, yeah. and also, like, I... I like comfort movies. Like I like things that are like feel very nostalgic. Yeah, nobody's sitting there like, oh God, exactly. what if LaForce catches Jay and Silent Bob? Right. Like, like I, nobody's <laughs> freaked out about that. It's a warm hug. Um obviously ten out of ten. It's Kevin Smith. Um yeah. I would like I, I was joking. I was joking. It's, it's <laughs> a, it was a nine out of ten. It's not actually a ten out of ten. I I feel like I feel bad now because my rating was like actually I was going to say, I was going to give it like a C plus and like, here's, here's why. I don't think it's, I don't think it's that like, I don't know. I don't think it's that good of a movie, but I also really enjoyed watching it. And so it's very weird. That's the thing is like, you can note the fact that it's not a good movie and still enjoy it. Well, M. Night Shyamalan has like the, the, yeah. the, the stock on that. He pretty much owns that region. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, no, yeah, C I is totally say, I think fair. I give it like a C plus. Cause like I, I enjoyed watching it and I would definitely watch it again. But like, I argue that there's competence issues in this film. So a C plus yeah. seems fair to me, but I can ignore the competence because I enjoy the story behind the film. That's fair. But I totally see C plus. Yeah. It's totally fair. Okay. Um, all right, let's call it there. And right. after we, uh, we're going to, we're going to take a quick break do an ad read and then come right back. Yep. Yep. Yes. What if every time you spilled your popcorn and soda on the front of your shirt, it just kind of blended in? Street Stains is a hella original clothing brand that allows you to wear your stains with pride. Shop streetstains.com for art and apparel. Use the coupon code Boo Loves You, that's B O O L O V E S Y O U, for 15% off site wide on www.streetstains.com. You can also check them out on Instagram at street underscore stains. Thanks again to our friends at Street Stains for sponsoring this episode of the Crosscut Cinema Podcast. And we're back. Boop, 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 boop. We're back. We're back. Boop, boop. So we talked about mall rats, which means that it is now time to talk about the invitation. Isn't we're, that right, Logan? Which was my mm -hmm. pick. He's looking at his phone. That's why I said that. I think I'm he's just trying to notes. look at something real fast. Oh, okay. You go ahead and do that then. Um, well, I'll just wait. I got it. I got it. I got it. I'll wait. <laughs> I, I love how like everybody else can get ready, but like when I get ready, it's like, the man, he's not ready. What are we doing? Why'd we start the show? Like, <laughs> I'm not just, fucking Johnny Carson. I think we'll be fine if I'm just, looking at my I phone. Just, I was just fucking around. Um, um, we can do this with or without you, bud. That's, I, oh. I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> no. Um, no, don't leave. So yeah, this is <laughs> use what? I just I just get up and walk out like I'm rejecting this invitation. I'm <laughs> oh god. Um yeah, so this was this was Bridget's pick. It was my pick because I wasn't able to be on the 
Big Lebowski. Yeah. And um, Bridget and I watched this movie together a while back. It was during quarantine. Yeah. Um, and I tried to watch it like a while before that, maybe like a year before that or so. And I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't stomach it. Um, but then I was like, I'm going to try again with Madison. And we had a good little like thriller night. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I haven't seen this movie in a while. I think Franny and Logan, you guys are more recent on it than I am. We just, uh, so I, cause you guys probably, I guess just watched it. I've yeah. seen it twice. I watched it originally in 2015. Um, I was visiting my friend Zeth and we watched it at his mom's house. Uh, I got, I always get this movie confused with your next from 2011. The mm-hmm. other kind of dinner table movie. That's nothing like this. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, you get plots confused. And then I just rewatched it with Franny no more than a week ago. Like how many days ago was it? Probably like two or three days ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I kind of wanted to rewatch it before we did this, to be honest. But um, we don't have Wi Fi in our house yet, and so I didn't watch it. Um, but I did read some summaries and some reviews today, so I'm I'm a, I'm abreast. But that to say, I probably won't have as much to have because I feel like I'm not fresh on it. So. Who am I kidding? I always think my opinion's most important. That's probably <laughs> that's oh probably going to prove itself to be untrue as we go on. But Logan just made a face. As of right now, I don't know. I, it's been a, it's been a hot minute. Um, we should um, probably do a plot synopsis. No, let's do a no. Let's let's, let's say one thing first because uh, I I feel like my plot synopsis might be a little mean. Maybe I mean I can give a plot synopsis. I feel like okay. I can give a pretty. I, I do want to just say that. Um, well, you know, go ahead. go ahead. Yeah, so um, this movie is about a man and um, his new girlfriend, um, Logan Marshall Green. I don't, I don't remember character names very well because uh, it's been such a minute. Kira, but, um, Kira, Logan Marshall Green's also Will. Will. Yeah. Um, yeah. By the way, I don't know. Logan Marshall Green and John Carroll Lynch are great in everything, and that's no different here. So I just want to shout out their performances. They're always yeah, they're good. very both both are very good. Um, um, especially John Carroll Lynch, he really kind of is the the maker of this. Is that also, the dude is from Kira Walking Dead? a fiance, a wife, a girlfriend? Because they're they're very I committed. I don't think that it I think ever that they're says like I, I, I think that they're like girl girlfriend boyfriend and like I thought a it was serious like you way. like you and Bridget. <laughs> No, me and Bridget are fiancés. No, remember no, when you said they were, you guys are girlfriend boyfriend that one oh, time? Yeah, we are. Mm-hmm. I know you guys are okay. Obviously, I know you guys are fiancés. Jesus, um, I just like to say that. I like to bring it like, on. Like, my fiance. Like, my wait till you fiance. scream. Like, why did you say that to my wife? That's my wife. Yeah. <laughs> um. But anyway, so they so they are you know partners for lack of a better like word to describe them um and they are going to this dinner party which is hosted by wills logo marshall green's ex-wife and her new husband at the house where they used to live when they were married and um also with a bunch of their friends that they haven't seen and and no one has seen this the couple of the couple eden and um in two years in yeah, it's been two years. In two years. So they get to this dinner party, and um, things are kind of understandably awkward it, at the at this outset because there's they, like a let me just say this real thing. There's like a whisper of some sort of tragic event that qu- kind of catalyzed the two years, and we don't get to know what that and is. Kind of catalyzed yeah. the divorce right. at the very too. beginning. We um, don't know. Yeah. So we but we come to find out that Will and Eden had a son who passed away at a very young age, and so yeah. that was sort of the the catalyst for their splitting up. Um, and, um, oh, no, you go ahead. Wait. Also, um, Eden has a new, new, um, husband, I believe. Yeah. Yes. And they met at the grief therapy before, uh, she and Will were divorced. Yeah. Yes. Which I thought um, was important So to they've say. invited all their friends. It's the first time I've seen them in a long time. And, um, there are a couple new faces at this party. Um, one is a girl who's been living with them who came back with him from Mexico and one is their friend. His name, name is, is Pruitt. Sadie. Yes. Pruitt, otherwise known as John Carroll Lynch, who, yeah. is, who gives, um, if you've ever seen like him on The Walking Dead or anything, this is one of those guys that's always slept on because he looks a certain way. Like he's definitely a character actor. But I truly believe that this dude is the best actor in this movie. Yeah, he's, he's really, yeah, really good. 
Um, I mean, like, effectively, you fucking hate him. Yeah. Like, you're supposed right. to. Right. Um, so, as it turns out, they have gathered all of their friends here and, you know, all of their loved ones and all of these people because they want to tell them about a sort of spiritual group that they've joined. It's a cult. Um, and it's it's called The Invitation, yes? That's what it's called? Yeah. 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 I, I, was like, I was like, I think it was called that. Um, and so, basically, that, in the ideas... And this is one of my issues with the movie. The ideas of this cult are a little bit fuzzy. Um, it's not 100%. No? You say no? No, I just heard fidgeting. I was like, is that picking up? But no. Oh, I think uh, you were like, I think you're like, no, they're not fuzzy. And I was like, I recall them being pretty fuzzy. I'm, I don't, dude, yeah, it's very they fuzzy. They just, you know, kind of yeah. believe like. So this cult, the, this cult's sort of beliefs are a little fuzzy, but the evening is intended to culminate with a mass m- murder. Mass, mass suicide genocide whatever you well call it. i mean you would call Murder, it a, I, I would call it a suicide, suicide but the people are not willing participants um mm-hmm. well, i mean some of them well, are murder so. slash suicide yeah so yeah the the idea is for i them don't know to- the given the um given the the end of the film i would call it a suicide genocide like Ooh, yeah true. yeah that's true that's true it is kind of, yeah. but these are all facts we don't yeah, know that's true i just I just yeah. thought about that a little more. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's part of the cult as well, is that like they will kill their friends and the idea being that they will pass on to the other side free of their grief and sadness and guilt. Which the characters right. in the film don't know that they're planning on a mass genocide, suicide. Correct. To All right, well, I won't... You know, I mean, we can get into it now because we've okay. kind of given the, the base of the plot. Right. All right. I am extremely frustrated with the characters. Cause yeah. I am expected to believe that all of these adults don't see the possibility of what they're doing except for Logan Marshall Green, who is himself a ment- uh, like mentally unstable from his own perception, um, which the movie tries really hard to make you think, well, maybe he's seeing this stuff because he's so unwell from what mm-hmm. happened. Maybe he's just seeing things that aren't there. I refuse to believe that when they went around the room and one gentleman said, I killed my wife and I forgive myself. That's fucked up. Any <laughs> other person who would be there would be like, that's fucked up. These and characters I mean, acknowledge it, but they stay and they're like, you're overreacting, Will. They only talked about, they only showed us a video of a bitch dying five minutes okay, ago. I will say this, though. There is a lot that we will stand for the sake of politeness. There is. But the fact for is, example. No, no, I, I agree with you. Let me cut you off, though, real quick, because <laughs> I, I refuse to take that as a reason, because when Will would try to reason with these characters on the side, they treated him... Like he was overreacting. If you are being positive or polite, when somebody pulls you aside away from all this drama and everything, you'd be like, yeah, it is kind of weird. We should probably go. But I no, mean, they were like, dude, this 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 wine's like 600 bucks or whatever the fuck. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I mean, to my recollection, people did kind of acknowledge no, that. Not really. I mean, they did in the, in the slide. They called them, they said they were eccentric. Like they... They were not so forgiving of their actions. But you also don't want to believe that your friends are going to murder you. Like, But there's common sense. I if mean, anyone didn't want to believe that he was going to get murdered, it was this man who has an attachment to his ex-wife thinking, she would never do that to me, especially with all we've gone through together. He comes to that realization, and he doesn't put on goggles for her. And he's I mean, and he is genuinely saying, polite to all the characters until the big blow up. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. That didn't bother me as much because, like, I don't know, man. Social convention is a is a is a hell of a motherfucker. If, You'll do a if lot. If you want to argue it on the side of social convention, it should have been the other or other reaction. I don't know about you, but when you're trying to be fucking finagled into listening to a religious zealot preach about their religion your general reaction is to go negative all these people were like yeah let's talk about it. let's play this game well it didn't really seem that way to me it just like i mean these are like some like hipster types and like this is like just some new agey thing and they've all heard of it mm-hmm. like like to like most of them have kind of heard about it so they're just like oh okay shown, this is a thing they were shown this a is video like when of you're, a lady dying i mean yeah, but I mean, it's just like it's like when your fucking friend is like, "Oh, you guys should all try Kato." It's like I'm not gonna fucking try Kato, thank you. It's like it's, you're gonna be polite. And you mean Keto? Keto? Kato? I don't know. Kato is the the Green Hornet sidekick that knows karate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. Keto. I don't. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I'm not. Yeah, doing no, no, it. no. Um, somebody telling me to try to only eat 
like dark meats versus somebody showing me a video of a lady being killed or essentially dying is not the same thing. Um, it's unrealistic to believe that a I character mean, it'd be different if it was like a lot of them were ignoring it, but a few of them understood. This was literally like him versus them. And the reason they made the film this way is to try to pass off this idea that maybe it's his mental health that's causing all this perception. The only issue with that is it's not fucking believable at all. Yeah, I mean, I, I see that point, and I and I agree that I think this movie could have either been a little could have been a little better if they left it a little bit more ambiguous. Absolutely, and gave the characters more realism. Yeah, it's because here's the thing. Also, you can follow social conventions and still like react. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they were literally when Will was freaking out at dinner. Like, where's what's this? Blah, blah, blah. Everyone else was like, Oh yeah, well you're you're overreacting. Our friend's only hours and hours late. But wouldn't you, if all this stuff was happening, you just watch a death video, be like, that is kind of sketchy. Yeah, and I mean, like, and None there, of them. there were times when I did feel, like, frustrated by, like, especially when the one person was leaving. Right, Claire. Oh, yeah. and, like, every, and, like, the one dude gets up in his face, like, why are you watching my friend leave? Like, like how uh, the fuck David. do you know I'm doing that? Maybe I'm just watching my friend leave, dickhead. Clearly, you're overly defensive about Dude, it. You like keep locking suspicion. the fucking door. It's unreal. There's bars on the goddamn windows. It's unrealistic to think that not one of those characters would have made some polite excuse to leave. And especially well, Kira. Did. No, no, she did, but not for the reasons not listed. Not for the reasons she listed. She did it because she was felt uncomfortable with the game. Not yeah. because she felt like anybody was a fucking serial killer or yeah. a genocider. And then, but also you don't want to, but I mean, I get to, the, I get that like, you know, she leaves because she's uncomfortable as opposed to the other reason, because ultimately like, it's very hard to believe that like your dear friends are going to like try to murder you. Not when it's not, sitting. it's not when you see a video of them showing you this person dying and they're also like glassy eyed the whole time and acting totally weird and fucked up. And I mean, I, I don't know. I just, oh, go ahead. Like, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I didn't think about this the first time I watched it because like a lot of times in movies, I just I like like critical thinking for me sometimes goes out the window, and I'm just like immersed. True. Don't well, do yourself there, a disservice. There's nothing wrong with with it. I think that a, a movie cannot necessarily make sense, but you have a certain suspension of, of disbelief. disbelief. Yeah, but I argue that this film is asking far too much for me to yeah. be like, yeah, Kira, she'd be cool with this what <laughs> and then like when she gets shitty with him and wants him to act polite yeah and it's like yeah i i do remember that now more yeah i mean like and i do i do definitely see what you're saying i still just really enjoyed this movie well i'll say this that one of the things that this film is good about is that it has a really cool concept and i feel like people who have the interests you do like with a cult and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that's going to instantly draw you in and you're going to be making excuses for but, it. Not to say that it's a bad movie, but I think that you're the audience that where if it falls up a little bit, this is something you're already interested in. You know what I mean? But I, I don't like that it's argument. It's like bad sci-fi movies. Am I not the aud audience too? All I listen to is true crime and occult shit. Well, And then I saw the flaws in this movie glaringly to the point where I couldn't enjoy it really. It doesn't It doesn't mean that just because you're interested in it too, you, you should... Everyone should I'm just saying. Right. I, I mean, feel like, like this movie is asking too much of an audience. I feel like it it could have been done so much better, and they really fell short. I think this film would have lived better in a world where, and I feel like maybe this is what he was going for, and that this direction was just a little messy. Actually, she. Sorry, oh. she. You're right. Uh, you are right. Same, it's a she. This is the same woman who directed Jennifer's Body. That's, That's a correct. fun fact. I right. love that. I know movie. Jennifer. Bo Jennifer's Body is great. Mm -hmm. I wish Diablo Cody would have worked on her with this one. No offense, but I feel like there would have been also if, okay, let me, let me yeah, I mean, she, I don't, I believe she did not write this script. No. I think that she directed the script that somebody else wrote. I think that she's a director who definitely needs like a, like a collaborative script. Um, but, mm -hmm. but let me say this real fast. Okay. The movie could have really worked because right off the bat, we can all agree that nobody was surprised by the, the cult aspect of it. Yeah. It was instantly very noticeable. If they would have done what they were trying to do, which was the slow burn of the Will character discovering these things and figuring it out for himself, I could have bought it. But the reason why it doesn't work is because there's too many other people around literally not buying it. Like, there's too many other people around, or sorry, buying into it. Like, they're all sitting there, and while he's having a critical thought and really thinking about things that are being said and actions that are being done and, and you know, paying attention to what these characters are doing on the side. Like, she's, he's looking into her bedroom window and seeing that she's doing this or... And then goes and checks what that is and finds the pill bottle. Like, 
he is using critical thinking even though he should be the most mugged up person there because he's literally encountering his wife for the his ex-wife for the first time in 2 years when they had a child who passed away and this ex-wife is also saying that she doesn't feel that pain anymore because she's a religious zealot now i feel like this man should be broken on the floor and the other characters should be figuring out things for him but no these other characters are like into it good point um i also want to like point out not to like derail that because I think that's completely valid, but um, he was definitely ex- like in my own experience, like I think that he was experiencing PTSD. Oh yeah, um, for sure. That's and yeah. PTSD is like a big part of it is like you're hyper vigilant, and so you so maybe especially because the other people like drink the wine. I don't remember. Again, it's been a while since I've seen the full movie. I watched like about 10 minutes of it <laughs> this morning. Minutes. That's just about, funny to me that it's only like, 10 minutes. <laughs> I watched about 10 minutes of it this morning before I went to work and I had to go to work and then I came home and I just passed out after work. But, um, and like PTSD makes you hyper vigilant mm-hmm. mm. at all times. My well, argument against that though is that he didn't need to be hyper vigilant to catch on to this because us as an I audience, mean, yeah, I mean, us as an audience, that's even valid. Though, like here's the thing we know exponentially less we know so much less than all these characters about who these people are so when we are meeting eden and her husband and pruitt i mean i guess they didn't know anything about pruitt but ian eden and her husband we are seeing them very fresh so we don't know what their normal and like mannerisms are we don't know what their usual acts are so when these characters have that information and they can base it off of the way that they're acting they should be vigilant enough to figure it out like we have. We know so early. I mean, we know yeah. like instantly. And, and the thing is, the film doesn't, doesn't it shouldn't be spelling it out to you because it, it's trying to unravel a story, but yet we're in it. We're like, that bitch is fucked up. That bitch is fucked up. They're a cult. They're crazy. Especially, They're I, I especially like, since we're supposed to believe that these people have Fran, all... Franny knew, Franny knew... Like five minutes into the movie. It's, I mean, and I think that, that I, I think that you're supposed I'm, to, especially no, I, since I don't think so. Because if you look, if you read a lot of these reviews, let me just say this one thing: mm. you read a lot of these reviews, they're like, not to spoil the ending, not to spoil the ending. If they're talking about the big genocide lamps at the end, fine. But I have a feeling, especially from what I've read, that that's not necessarily what everybody's talking about. People are talking about the big twist of, oh, they actually are trying to kill him because in the film they're trying to use his PTSD to make you think that he's thinking this shit up. But the problem is it's not directed competently enough to give that message. I I did not get that sense. I want to let Franny say what she's going to say and then I have something. Okay. I think it's very hard to believe that, like Logan was saying about um, how we know exponentially less about how these characters normally are, we're supposed to believe that all these people have been friends for a very long time. So much so that like they were there during this tragic incident where their son passed and they're not going to notice the fucking weird behavior and like nobody pulled Eden aside and be like, Hey, the, the what's one person on? did the will character. Yeah. The only just person will. who was mm-hmm. noticing just what's will. going on. None of the other like friends there pulled her aside once to be like, what's going on here? Are you okay? <laughs> um, I think that's very hard to believe, especially when it's a friend you haven't seen in two years. That kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. And then the other thing is um, I don't, and then okay, the genocide lamps, obvious the second he lit that lamp that yeah. was so obvious but at, but at the same time though it was a really cool shot i totally then, give crafts mm-hmm. to like the goosebumps you get when you see the like, like oh my god i knew so something was significant with the lamp but i didn't know that we were going to see a sea of lamps that was a cool moment i felt like it wasn't entirely earned but it was a cool moment like it really was a great shot but um, um but yeah like i want to i want to get back i want to go back to sort of the idea that like we can suspend our disbelief a little bit for this movie. And like, that's, and I think that that, that, that just is like almost a difference of opinion on how much you're willing to, to, uh, to allow for mm-hmm. in this movie. Um, I don't know. I kind of, I kind of liked it because it played with this. I, this idea that, you know, you're supposed to act a certain way in a certain situation and you're not supposed to, you know, be a bad guest and you're not supposed to like, you know, be rude in the social setting. But and obviously this is like an extreme. And in this situation, you'd be like, uh, yeah, I'm going to say shit, but um, I, I'm like willing to, to suspend my, 
disbelief in order to allow the movie to expound on that point that like we feel like we need to act a certain way in a social situation and we feel that we need to act a certain way when people are grieving and when people are going through something we we allow certain things from Mm -hmm. them because we understand like this is a hard time for you and i think that like ultimately and i would like to hear like I, i i would like to talk about this aspect of the movie um I think like the movie has something really interesting to say about like grief and like feeling our feelings and like how in an effort to, to stop feeling the pain that we feel when terrible things happen um, is ultimately one that's futile. And we find replacements for the pain that we feel um, and how we have to feel it. And and that's what I really liked about this movie. I think that like, and, and what I would say too is, and, and I and I think that I believe I was reading something that the director said that was kind of um, kind of kind of similar to this. Maybe um, I don't really remember. I was reading it earlier today and so I could be totally mis- misrepresenting this quote. But I think that she said and this is kind of the way that I took it. Um, this the story of the cult, the story of the invitation of this thing that they're trying to get them into is a little bit second secondary to what the film is trying to say about well, grief well, and no, family. No, I got the next thing. Cause I, I if okay. You I have something response, to say about what she's saying too. So do I. So okay. I also want to let Bridget weigh in. Well, the, if Bridget, if you want to weigh in after <laughs> us, we, we, yeah, yeah I'll let you all go. It's a pecking order. Okay. So first off, um, you're half right. I think, I think that the movie is trying to say these messages and I think in some regards, if you really um, take the time to forgive a lot of its flaws, you can see it. But the problem is, is that there's nothing, um, there's nothing, and not to say that every movie needs to be entertaining, but it kind of, it kind of does need to grab you. This movie is so conventional in some of its reveals, as well as some of its treatments and mental illness, which are not correct and riddled with, with horrible examples of mental illness. The movie is far too conventional in the way that it treats its characters for me to be like, yeah, let me grip onto this message because the whole time I'm just thinking, why are these characters acting this way? And then the other thing, let me me finish the other thing that you said where they're acting a certain way. None of these people are, you're saying that they're acting really civilized. They're really kind of not though. They're acting like they just went They're at like a college rager, you know, they're doing things and talking a certain way about wine and doing cocaine. And I get that was a part of the game, but the overall emotions and energies of these people are like they're not hanging out with a couple that broke up that had a kid die. They're hanging out with people after they went to Joe's Crab Shack. Um, <laughs> I mean, they're pretty young, though. This is a pretty... But it doesn't matter. They, we're talking I mean, I about, guess that's true, we're talking about like, a child's death. Yeah, I mean, I and, guess that's true. And the true, disappearance but I think of a friend who is seemingly very, very yeah. unwell. Because if you don't see she's unwell, you're on fucking cocaine already. Yeah, but I mean, I do think that they're at a level where they're like, you know, they're going through something... Franny was supposed to talk. I, I know. I was just, I would just wanted to like sort of re- respond. I think I should get to respond. Like it's on a debate well, stage. Well, I was almost stopped from responding. So I'm just saying, um, well, I wanted to respond too. Hold exactly. on. You'll get your turn. <laughs> um, but yeah, but no, I think I like, like, I think that, um, God, I lost my fucking train of thought. Um, huh, what a nice response. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> if you want to interrupt me, you can talk anxious. about it now. Damn. All the shit's making me anxious, guys. <laughs> um, we gotta, we gotta have like a group powwow. See, after this. you want things to be nice. You want everybody to get along. But yeah, I think, I think that they're just like in a place where they're like, you know, th- these people have gone through something. I don't want to, I don't want to stir the pot. And I think that 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 like happens, and maybe not to this extent. But um, I think I think that like this movie expands and exaggerates on a on a social convention, which is like sort of what I like for a horror movie con- to do. I have to say this: there's nothing socially conventional about the way they're acting. Oh my god, I mean, y'all! I'm just gonna with. interrupt. Um, um, saying this movie has something interesting to say about the way people deal with grief is not fucking accurate because it has a very standard thing to say about the way people deal with grief don't agree religion okay. really it's just a big fucking metaphor for religion people fucking hide their grief and like that kind of shit because that shit's all culty to begin with <laughs> and then they try to force it down other people's throats 
I don't know if it's necessary. Doesn't that I mean, speak to the betterment of the true. film if that's your argument, no, though? No, I'm just saying it's not. Wow, she's, tra- she's so she's tra- pissed. I'm just, I'm just she's saying this grabbed movie the mic. Didn't... She's like, let me snatch this bitch up. Like, bro, but can I'm we about do to drop some bars. For, can Listen. we do real talk for a second? I feel like you're really upset right now. I'm just saying this movie had nothing new to say. It's very standard. <laughs> I want to weigh in after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah I want to let Bridget weigh in. Are you good? Because I feel like you're up here. I just, I felt like I kept getting not a chance to say what I wanted to say, and I was very frustrated <laughs> um i don't know if i would agree that <laughs> not about you not getting a chance to say what you say need to say which i i agree with that wholeheartedly <laughs> however i i don't know if i would agree with like the fact that you think that it's only just religion i don't think it's necessarily well no i'm saying like it's a very standard fair people hide their grief I mean, like, and other things and like try to shove it down other people's throats that's like, just but I agree like, it's nothing Logan new said, it's nothing unconventional if, this, if what you say about a religion is true i think that speaks to the movie rather than as a detriment but let go on Bridget. i don't Sorry. get how it would speak to the movie though because i mean i'm because not gonna it, sit it there does and exactly like, what you're saying it's trying to do yeah, no you're, you're, it's i'm saying the point that you think that religion is a I'm, way for people to mask their grief. Mm, no, I'm yeah, saying. But, okay, I'm saying people get put in situations all the time where they have shit shoved down their throat. Like it's not. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, what the movie's saying. No, and I, I genuinely saying, don't understand yeah, what the, the issue yeah, so is here. Slow. I'm saying you're like you were praising this movie for like the what it had to say about how people deal with grief oh, and it's nothing unconventional it's I nothing get it we now. haven't heard She's, before she, i see what you're saying she's saying that you're talking about how it's got a cool way a different way to talk about grief where she's arguing it's the most conventional way to convey yeah. grief i i kind of agree but that was the I most mean, wild way of saying that it's, it's just like I feel like, like you're really hot like, right now yeah, like, ooh, like well, okay i am steamed because I fucking tried to say something like 15 times and y'all just kept talking. Well, and I was about to start well, throwing I some mean, punches. Well, to be fair, that that's what we do on a podcast. I know. I, mean, I know. Podcast yeah. for people. And that's when we gave I, you your time, you, you, you screamed. yelled and screamed and grabbed the mic like be shorty. <laughs> but um, I want to let Bridget I'm get passionate. back to what she was saying so that we don't have two people throwing hands. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I'm calm. Yeah, you seem very cool to me. Yeah, that was that wasn't sarcastic. And you felt very, very cool. sarcastic, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm cold. Like, I'm uh, like, I'm not doing shit. I don't like, know what you're talking about. I'm not because saying people are ripping your pick. Like, I mean, I don't think anybody. Everyone is ripping my pick. I'm not ripping your pick. I like it. I like this movie. I'd rip this movie regardless of if it was your pick. Yeah, I just wanted to say it's yeah. not. It's not like you put out the movie, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna trash it. No, I actually. No, I know. I was just saying that. I like, thought Bridget's, it was your next when you told it to me, and I was really excited. I I'm still excited I've to never talk se- about I've it. I've never seen it. I, I was just saying that Bridget was very cool. Horror movie that's really given, fun. I think five years ago I would have enjoyed this movie, but now that I look at movies in a, a better way, <laughs> than, <laughs> that's so aggressive. Okay, sorry. I'm just not going to talk. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, if, do that's we need you, to, if that's what you do want. Do we need to do a, do we need a, a pause? pause? No. I just feel like every time you say something, Fra- everybody's Franny, derailing Franny, me. Franny, how do you not see what you said as like a huge fucking back slap though? You went, now that I'm a privileged movie person. <laughs> no. And can, like that's not how you speak on the matter if you disagree on the film. I don't sit there and go, Bridget, your movie was fucking well, bub kiss. I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. I felt... Well, I see. I see how that yeah. came off shitty. Now. I, I didn't. I didn't take it like that. You I kind of knew what she I said. <laughs> I'm just saying. Sometimes I, I see what people uh, mean instead of what they say necessarily. Yeah, but that's more of a what I mean but versus no, 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 what no, I no, said. So that's a good point. We all know that Fran didn't mean anything by it, but we are on the internet. Yeah, that's why I'm like, let's let's joke around and bring down the tone because right now, oh, I'm losing. You're my like mind. the this Alex is- Jones of film reviews. <laughs> <laughs> This is so funny to me. Like, I've caffeinated to an ungodly extent today. (laughs) Clearly. Um, You know what, Madison? Um, I'm bro, about to throw true. this lemon head at you. Oh, that's fine. I said it's I was overstimulated earlier. I'm definitely overstimulated now in like a bad way. Way, way. more like, than I earlier. Like I feel like I'm in trouble. Yeah, no, I'm like, <laughs> okay, guys, can we, like, can we be civilized and nice relaxed. to each other? I feel very anxious, but it's fine. I Well, I'm not conflict averse. Well, is that really that hard to make though. you feel anxious? 
Shush. <laughs> oh my god I wow. love you. do you see what you're doing now <laughs> like uh, let's let's uh, let's simmer down it's just a movie guys <laughs> yeah I, I didn't and that's not me I've, no, I've been I know. very I'm, civil I've, I've, I've been very civil too and um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> this movie just upset me because it's I, I so insulting i don't understand why you're so like keyed up about it when it like it's it is just a movie <laughs> like you're actually like, that's coming movie, from us it, <laughs> it felt like an insult you were acting like this movie killed your dog in front of you when it, it, it was in reality although to be fair that coyote scene was was so unnecessary it, it was supposed to draw I, I, it's supposed to draw this moment where it's like Oh, this is clearly going to be a metaphor for when he goes and he tells him, like, yeah, we're taking you out of your misery, too. It was not worth the animal violence and uncomfort for me. I, I yeah, remember. That was really hard. That wrecked me. Yeah. I got yeah. I gotta give it that. It just felt like it was trying to be too artsy. That, that was moment. one thing that I didn't quite, like... I had to plug yeah, my I ears. Yeah, I felt that it didn't have a, I didn't have a place. It, it, it works in the like, world where we consider everything the movie did a good option, but it's just one of those bad ideas, I think, that followed I up think, the film. I think... I think if that scene was in a book or a short story, it would have been better, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it probably because it you can't kind of actually like one of those things that could have worked better on paper. We're gonna pause real quick, guys. Okay, we're back now. <laughs> we needed a minute. <laughs> just, just a, just a, a minute. <laughs> we um, needed to bring the temperature down. Yeah. So. I was as I was saying. I think that the opening scene would have read would have been better in like a short story or a novel, um, just because like and maybe that's just me being like, ooh, the the like actual like seeing it is so and like hearing it is so much worse. Um, but like I feel like with visual, it felt a little bit more like I don't want to say torture porn. But a little but bit, like, though. A little bit. I remember when like we, shock when value. that like scene came on, I was like, Bridget picked this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, I at the time, I mean, like, I felt like the rest of the movie made up for it, even though I know that half of the room disagrees. Hmm. Um, Go ahead. Sorry. But I really feel like this would have been a very, very impactful, powerful short film. No, short I was film. actually going to say um, that this might have made story. a very interesting short film. I concur. Because and I think maybe well, the ahead. issues that you guys have with it would have been resolved if we didn't so, have to spend so much yeah. time with the characters and we didn't see them like make what f- feels like a rational choice after a rational choice and like willful in- ignorance. No, I do think there is something right. to be said about I think that's the a willful good point. ignorance and I kind of find that interesting in this film, but I if you don't it, like yeah. it, you don't like it. I find it exhausting and kind that's of fair. kind of in the way of, because I agree, I think this would have been a really good short. I also think, um, I mean, maybe this is just me, but I feel like the way Eden was treated in the story was very passive of her treatment and her life in regards to the trauma and i feel like this movie could have cut a lot of the bullshit out by us giving an introspective look at why she's made this decision to become a zealot because clearly once they start having to kill people the way they have because they didn't drink the kool-aid and whatnot Mm -hmm. the wine yeah um she has she's filled with regret there's no way this character wasn't thinking that in the back of her mind the whole time it would have been really interesting to get her perspective versus instead of yeah and i mean one dude yell about getting a blowjob and then another dude showing up and then instantly dying after yeah. he gets there. But I mean, I do think, I do think that her character is kind of interesting um, in that, like that she does so much to just not feel the pain. And I think, and I think that although this is kind of the thing that Franny didn't like about it, um, like what it says about grief, I, I actually find that message like really interesting about how we, want to deal with sadness by like finding something that will make it not be there rather than like being able to live with our emotions as we have them and like accepting the emotions that we have and the painful things that happen. So, so I thought that I thought that that sort of aspect of it was interesting. And I thought that her character specifically was interesting, especially in her reaction to the person telling her, like, I don't really buy into all this. And she like slaps him. Right. A thousand percent disagree. Um, and the reason being, is they wanted their cake and to eat it too. They wanted her to be a cold, mindless killer while also we think about how grief is instilled in people and how they deal with it. I think that they can't just have her be mindless until she is because now it just seems like the character has two different 
wildly emotions and, 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 and rays of like reasons she's doing things. And it makes her, um, I guess you could say her goals seem very kind of fucked up because you're like, okay, her goal is to not feel the grief and to walk away from all this. But then there's also the goal of like, if she's being in touch with her emotions and admitting to the, like that, that none of this matters, she's going to be somewhere better. Why would she be so guarded about everything to where she's not even showing any of her inner emotions, like her doubt, her clear doubt that you see exemplified when they start killing people with the gun. Well, I think that she's not, I, I just think the character is weak. I think that early, I, I would disagree. I think that early in the film, she is, she has convinced herself that she's found a way to live without this pain. And for her to, to, to kill her friends, it seems like it's to her the right thing to do because it also means... But she's that going they, along with killing her friends the whole time. Yeah, it was a very unfleshed yeah, I know. So like to character. her, that's like the way that they can no longer have to deal with their pain. But then she had an emotional like destruction when they started killing her friends. Yeah, and I think I that, mean, I think that, I, that I, speaks to the point that like once she realized what she had done, she realized that like that nothing could take away the pain of her so loss. So she's complex I, enough to keep her emotions guarded in the sense of not telling people what's really going on, but emotionally developed enough to know that she's doing them good. I feel like when somebody is on the run of a genocide, they're going to sit there and try to convince you that it's better to die anyway. I think that... I mean, um, I think that's what she was trying to do until faced with it herself. Not I think that... Um, okay. So I think that, like she might have been more of a like so she might have been more of like a follower and that like people are like you know they okay so like cults obviously bring you in when you're very very weak yeah um and like obviously they met her through this grief counseling it seemed to me anyway i don't know if that's um, accurate but that's but okay. I it might not be like accurate. That, the, that idea that like they they kind of Find they people in this weak people. They prey on they people, did. but they didn't find people through this. I just wanted to right. for people you're right, who haven't right. seen it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, I not, it's not explicitly mis- said, but I it, also... It's, it's not true, because they actually go they go on a trip. That's right, that's they go to happens. Mexico, and they... Oh, true, that's that's true. Um, I just don't want to be inaccurate about it. Yeah, okay, I mean, that's true. She was very, it was very clear that she was, like, not well. And I think that, you know, like, cults prey on that. And... I think that if you hear something enough times and like you're told something enough times that, you know, like killing your friends and family is a good thing because they are going to be free of all of this pain that they have and being told it over and over and over and you start believing it and you become yeah, and conditioned. I think, and I think that I'm, she does believe it. I think I, she does too. And I'm I also not, think that she like, she isn't hiding her emotions. She really believes that she has. I'm, I'm not done. Oh, sorry. Ooh. Go ahead. Anyway. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, so I think that she starts to believe this, but then once you actually, I think that like, like being like, okay, killing somebody for their own good is, you know, is the right thing to do according to their, um, the cult. Yeah. But like, I think actually doing it and like putting your friend, like killing your friends off and like the act of it, doing it and seeing them die, I think is harder for her than she anticipated and that she knew would be. And that's where the breakdown kind and of also, comes in. And also alongside that, like, it was supposed to be all of them dying together, together instead of like via this poison. I have my rebuttal and then ready. and then for it to not work was like a breakdown of what the way that it was supposed to go of them all being together in these last moments, leaving the pain of the world behind. That's the right thing to do for her. I think, but what but what happens? What what happens grow. next to actually like actively murder them with a gun is a whole different animal i think to her and i think and i think too like bridget said like it's one thing to believe it and it's another to do it and um and i think what was i gonna say i think i think like what i was kind of saying before like i think that she she believes at least like on a conscious level that like she has found the way she has found the way to relieve herself of her grief, even if unconsciously she doesn't know. So you like talk about her being able to hide these emotions. I don't really think that she's hiding the grief that she's feeling. I think that she truly believes like, yes, I've moved on. No, no, not just the hiding of the grief though. And and here's the other thing too. 
Um, I mean, I guess, Franny, go ahead and say your piece. Cause I I'm, was going to just kind of back you up. Like I, I see what you're saying about how like, it's hard to believe that this character like knows that the end is near and like all the other characters that also know that the end is near are very expressive of like how they're feeling like that one crazy girl that oh, like yeah, she, was Sadie. she was like i she was all I she was crazy to watch but like mm. she was very like hard on her sleeve she was like i love you guys she like and then like all the other ones like aired all their grievances and stuff and like this character still felt very pulled back mm-hmm. so it, it her motivations mm-hmm. are just kind of unclear well, and like her she doesn't really have a character much and then i want to say this um not a coherent one at this least. is this is just a little aside because yeah. I, I think that this is just a matter of disagreement here i don't think that i think that people could view it both ways when yeah we're talking i don't I think sure. that's true about like the two opinions that we have of this film i agree in general. Uh, well mm, okay that's fair but but i mean specifically this character mm. you really could go either way like yeah. i don't know if we're talking critically about the whole film i don't know if i agree that there is like one where it's a genius film, one where it's not. I think there's. I'm one not where saying it's, it's a, a genius film. That, I just enjoyed it. But that's what I'm drawing the line of. Like I think you can say it's a it's an okay movie. It's a good movie. It's a fun movie. Um, it's interesting. It's got a cool concepts. I don't think you can call it critically a great film. I don't know. I mean, I think I think I think critically, this movie was very well received. Yeah, but it was at a time, you know, it's one of those things. This was kind of before the Ari Asters and things like that, and. This was definitely the beginning of a genre push in horror and psychological thriller. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I agree with that. I think this is sort of like, this is sort of a genre that was really sort of taking off in this moment. Mm-hmm. Like, this sort of like but it's, different I think it's, way of doing horror. And I don't think it's as good as a movie like maybe Midsummer or Hereditary. The thing about but movies I that, think, um, But okay. I think that it, I think that it, it adds something to that sort of genre of film. And I, and I, I do like this movie. The issue with genres of that type is that everything is hyper focused on because it's all about the independent um, actions that these characters are going through in the moments. The, p- the reason why it doesn't work for this film versus why it works in an Ari Aster film or a Jordan Peele film is because the characters make sense and what they're doing makes sense. And also, there's like the inaccuracies in the film are the film's so entertaining or you should say or gripping or whatever you want to call it that you don't notice the inaccuracies. With this film, I'm just thinking. Okay, so this cult leader who posted to everybody's Max, everybody's emails, that he wants everybody to go kill themselves. That didn't leak out to the press anywhere. Nobody got a hold of this. Mm-hmm. This guy is planning all this horrible shit, and the only thing people know about it is like the slightest bit. Like it's a little wacky out there in Mexico. I feel like if somebody was planning a mass genocide, somebody might have heard about it beforehand. But yet, you look at the end of the film, and all these lanterns are lit everywhere. There was no. There was no precaution made. There was nobody who was digging into it where if you even hear about any kind of cult now in 2015 where True. the internet's alive, any cult that does anything, any cult where the girls eat dirt, everybody knows everything <laughs> about it. You, there's no way you can pull off a plan this insane without someone hearing no matter how closed off your cult is. Factual. I mean, yeah, I'm I mean, a, but I'm also willing to spend, suspend disbelief a little bit. But, right. but that, that's I mean, true. Rigid. But the thing is, the film for me wasn't entertaining enough for me to suspend that disbelief because I, I was spending more time thinking about the inaccuracies than the characters and what they were going through because I didn't find it that interesting. Mm. But that's just me. Yeah, I mean, I, I found this movie very interesting. But what were you going to say, Bridget? Sorry. I mean, I feel like there is a lot of things we probably don't know. You couldn't get away with a mass genocide everywhere. I mean, you, no. can, just, you can suspend no, it not for the this film. Time. But we're talking about I mean, times of people in the Hollywood Hills getting all g- g- murdered at the same time. I mean, I definitely I mean, think it's it's un- you have to dis- suspend your disbelief. How yeah, much though? How I much agree. are we? How much are we? I mean, willing this is, to suspend disbelief for? A I mean, I think that, that varies that, that person to person. Exactly. Yeah. I think that kind of goes with what we were saying. You know, you can watch the film, and I think that there's elements about it where you can go, "This is a really cool concept. I really like the acting. I really like this." And, yeah, you, and like, you can totally, it can totally roll over you and you won't even care about like something that's significant. Cause I mean, think about the movie us, right? Oh my God. The factual inaccuracies and the things that would happen that don't make any sense rough, in the film yeah. are, 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 are just insane. Mm-hmm. But the film is so gripping and entertaining that a lot of people didn't really care. But yeah. there are people out there that claim that us is not an art house film. And I think it is, but that just goes with a differing opinion where for me, I felt like this movie was just a little too, lifetime movie for me i felt like yeah i felt like the payoff wasn't worth the 
but had a cool concept. Yeah, Bridget had quite a reaction to you saying Lifetime movie, and I want to. I want to let her. Like, I'm trying to think of like what a Lifetime movie would be because my brain went to Hallmark and it was not. They're very (laughs) different. It's it's just very cut and paste. Like it's very, it's a very unoriginal concept. I don't think it's. It's I don't think that's true either. I think it's it's very unoriginal. unoriginal. I think it's. Oh, are you talking about the film? Are you talking about Lifetime movies? No, no, no. This this movie. Okay. This movie was super unoriginal. I don't think it's necessarily that. I haven't seen. movie about a suicide cult like this yeah but how early on did you know that this was going to happen within the first five minutes it's not a new idea yeah, it doesn't I've, make seen, it like, I've seen movies about suicide cults like this but yeah that, that doesn't that doesn't that's not that's neither here nor there it's just unoriginal i think that the i way don't this, think it's not unor- i don't think i it's think that the way this movie was crafted was original like i liked i i liked the direction of this movie a lot i liked the i love that the I, sort of look of it mm-hmm. i thought was really good like i, I liked the the way that the scenes were kind of composed there was a lot I think that there was i think that there were like even though like dinner like dinner party goes terrible is a thing that's been done mm-hmm. and a cult, lot of and with cults as well in the mix and, of the yeah and cults is a thing that's been done and both of them I have do been think, done together and, I, I and do poisoning think, of food slash drinks at dinner parties has been i done. mean that goes back to romeo like, and Juliet. Yeah, right, exactly really. that's but, why i'm saying but i mean it's there's, not there's original nothing there's nothing new under the sun um, right i mean like well, well, but, there's new movies no, 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 that let, come out all the it's time not, like what I we're say, always borrowing yeah, let's, like let's, yeah let's new talk. artists are always borrowing from old art there's nothing yeah, new that, that madison we can talk think of <laughs> <laughs> i'm just joking dude but um but what i want to like, sorry to expand on my point Y'all interrupt me all the fucking time. I can interrupt That's not true. You. We literally stopped dead for you to talk, so that's not true at all. <laughs> not always, though. So always. Can you just no. say it so before I lose my thought, please? Can we just spit it out? <laughs> Instead just, of arguing about who gets to say what, can we just say what we're going to say for the love of God? I was just going to say that when we talk about, like, crafting a story and, like, genre and just, like, craft in general in the... Um, in the creative writing classes that I've taken, I mean, that's something we have to all grapple with is that nothing, there's absolutely no idea that's going to be a fresh and original. There's nothing. But because you we're can, also like, influenced by the lives that we lead. But that, right. doesn't, that doesn't give an excuse to lack complex. Yeah. I mean, no, I think that's I feel true. Like, I feel like it didn't lack complex. I but absolutely that's, feel it did. Yeah, but, that's, but that's it a difference lacked, of opinion. Yeah, it I lacked felt that this characters. Movie, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's my turn, buddy. I'm just saying it lacked characters. I'm just saying you can say that after I say it. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> um... Um, that was that was my best attempt at it. Was it a buddy scream or or a smoky scream, whichever a one? Smoky, was. smoky yeah. scream, a smoke scream, smoke scream. Um, but I, but yeah. So I feel like though though these concepts have been done and they've been done together, I feel that this movie does have new new ways of crafting them. I feel like what are some yeah. examples? Uh, well, just, well, I mean, I mean, like in in sort of the way that this movie looks and feels, I think that this movie has like kind of a very distinct feel like, like about what, it. Though? Like I, I get what you're saying, but like what specifically? So, cause people haven't seen it. So they need like a kind of description. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that the way, I think that the way this movie, um, makes use of its space is really interesting. I kind of like the confinement of it. And I like the, the, the way that the characters eventually have to strain against that confinement. Um, Something I also really liked about it too is that Will lived in this house and that you see that come back when they have to eventually like escape the house. Um, and uh, and like another thing that I, I also really, yeah, I, I really liked was the way that this movie, um, yeah, I guess I said this, but like the way that it used the space and it made like certain spaces feel smaller and certain spaces feel bigger. And like, I liked the scene when they're all at the dinner table that felt very like interesting and significant to me. Um, another scene that I really liked that I felt was kind of unique is after Eden, once Eden is like dying, when she, I think she, doesn't she stab herself? Or yeah, she shoots, shoots herself. herself. She shoots herself. Shoots herself. Shoots herself. Also, Correct. might I add that that is the dumbest way to shoot. Yeah, yourself. that's really unrealistic agree, to think like, that, a, that I, a person would do that. But let, but let me tell I mean, you it's why. Been done no, before. Let me tell you why she did do it because it was actually artful and important, and I didn't think about it at the time. She has come to the realization that she is insurmounting guilt about her friends that were murdered, 
And she is well aware of the slow way of dying by shooting yourself in the stomach. Yeah, that's what I was going right. to say. Right, and I mean, okay. people I think have tried it. to kill themselves by shooting themselves yeah, in the I, stomach I think, before I think it's that, happened. I mean, it, it, is, it is a dumb concept, but when you start to realize the motivations of the character, which I feel don't have motivations till like the very end. And also... But that's, that decision makes sense to me. And also, like, how connected she is to to motherhood and how she's lost that connection to motherhood by erasing the pain that she feels. And so now she kind of, what? I think that's kind of a stretch, but that's okay. I I mean, I mean, I think you can read that as being significant there. I feel like I don't think that that she is choosing that, but I think that that's like a choice that the film makes. I saw like no signs of like maternal aspects to her throughout the whole film. Well, yeah, because by erasing her, her grief, she's erased her. But what I'm saying is to, to give her that element for mm. me at the end seems very cheap. Mm. It's like not every mother is a mother. You know what I mean? Just because yeah, I guess that's she true. was a mother doesn't mean that she is aching that pain. I mean, she is clearly, but for her to be that her point of her demise, I don't see that. I mean, I and, don't think um, that it's like her, like I'm doing this because I'm a mother and like, but that's what she child. thought. That's why I was no, saying. No, I, she said I didn't the think film. that the, I don't think that the character did it for that reason. She well, said that she it, thought then the, the film, film is an even cheaper idea because the film yet again really didn't show that maternal side of her really. I mean, because pretty uh, much throughout the whole film, nothing really. I mean, I because think also her flashbacks. Well, I think you've seen those flashbacks. The flashbacks the way that she, were mainly involved with him because yeah, they were his. See her they were his dimension flashbacks because we didn't if, get if to see. We're, hold on, but you hold on. We didn't get to see her perspective like I was talking about earlier where we get to see more of her. Everything was kind of like she was very cold and guarded and weird. Yeah. If we saw more flashbacks of her as a mother, I would take that. But the only thing we see as a flashback for her is I think like a second at the bat scene as well as in the bathtub. And yet again, those interactions are more involved with Will's character versus Eden's character. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. And I don't I don't think that that's necessarily like the interpretation of the scene why she shoots herself. In yeah, the I stomach. think I, I, I agree more that I think it was a suffering thing. Yeah, um, which is um, a cool idea. And then I and then I also really liked I thought it was really interesting how she asks him to take her outside and uh, like and like you wonder, is it that because she wants to see these lanterns lit? She wants to even though she sort of has this remorse now, she still wants to see those lanterns let know that other people are leaving their pain. I read that as a, cause she's so isolated in the situation she's in. I mm-hmm. don't, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but I think that was more about, she's been closed in mm-hmm. for a while. I mean, the bars on the windows that having right. to stick close with her cult. I think that was just a moment of escapism. Like I'm finally free of being entrapped in what people need me to be and being closed into this idea where I mm-hmm. stuff all my grief. Um, I feel like the moment she shot herself, the lanterns were something that she would want to look away from. Mm. But um, you know, again, maybe you're right. Maybe it was her trying to see the lanterns. But yeah, I really like the last scene of this movie, and I think that I agree. Oh yeah, and I th- and I think Definitely. that the concept of this movie is really cool. And again, I like that the way this movie ties. Uh, you don't like this for any, but I actually like the way this movie ties grief to religion. And I think I think that I that's interesting. And I and I think that, I think that's a concept that's been done, but I don't think it's something that's been overdone all i'm saying is it's not an original thought i'd I also mean, say this isn't a movie it's not drawn a, into concept of, of religion but drawn yeah. in drawn into concept of like the idea of the afterlife because really there's no like we're, we're talking about it more as like this is a belief system not a religion yeah because yeah, a I, religion I better, is far more complex and different than what they yeah i guess the, the better the better thing to say is like a mantra like people look or spirituality in general uh, yeah i agree with spirituality. or something uh, something outside of themselves to relieve them because the imply religion implies a whole an organizational structure i think that's true and like a like a set way to mm-hmm. yeah not only that but that would actually if it was a religion it'd make more sense why they felt the tabooedness of not being able to speak up i think that it would have been better if it was a religion um, cause yeah, as that's, it sits, that's a fair point. As that it, is sits, a fair it point. kind of is just like a fucked up cult, and I don't know why anybody would be mindful and respectful of an actual cult. I mean, yeah, that's a fair point. they're they're it's based off of actual cults, though. Yeah, and people weren't mindful and respectful of those. I mean, oh, I I see what you mean. I'm following yeah, now. Oh, yeah, I thought you, you meant like the members, and I was like, well, I mean, obviously the members of those. No, no. But I feel you. I'm mm-hmm. I'm following now. I got you. But, yeah, like um, if if I came over to your guys' house and you sat us down and tried to have us join your cult, yeah. I would just fucking leave. Yeah, like, if an old dude came up all Heaven's Gate style and was like, watch this bitch die, I'd be like, Madison, we have to have a conversation. Right, like I'd pull one of you aside and be like, you good? 
<laughs> and then I mean, leave. honestly, the the like come into your house and get you to join in this thing. Like that's just what every like high school friend that's now in a pyramid scheme is doing. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> like, hey, girl, you want to be your own boss? And all I'm those, like, absolutely not. Thank you. All those drinks where it's like they'll give you waterfalls and you'll lose weight. I don't want to say a name of one Franny, so be careful. Oh my god, I joined one pyramid scheme. I tried for a telling full day. you, dude. I tried telling you, I'm like this is not good. Yeah, I never tried the product. I just posted like one thing and then i was like eh, i feel weird doing this <laughs> yeah um um before we end because i feel like we're we're drawing close here um unless you guys like i don't know do we not feel like we're going close oh uh, we're close yeah. i have yeah. said more than i wanted to say yeah me too um <laughs> so but i want to say one last thing i think it's very interesting and like significant to me like, I know that it's, again, you have to suspend your d- disbelief a lot to, you know, get here, I guess. But um, the end shot with all of the lanterns, it's very interesting to me, like, how many members this cult has and, like, yeah, how many, like, people are, like, suffering. And, like, I mean, everybody is suffering, like everyone has woes. <laughs> um, yeah. But I mean, like it kind of like drives home that like. Everybody that, wants to relieve their pain. Right. Everybody wants that. And like, I don't know. I mean, I think it's, it's just like a nice shot and a nice reminder. And it feels very poignant. It's a, feel, it's a very good ending. It's like I film. said, that's a great shot. I yeah, love that shot. I think it's a great ending, personally. Yeah. I just think, of like, this. Now, not to disturb what you said, but I really want, you know the music at the end of um, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince? The orchestral, like, crying music? I want to make an edit where it's all those lanterns and it's got that music overshadowing mm-hmm. it because it's a really haunting image. Yeah. It really is. But, you know, my, my thoughts on it are my thoughts on it, but like, I love that shot. Madison and I watched it, like, 3 a.m., and I remember just, like, be sitting there, like feeling very affected and like yeah like you said like the the, i hate that phrase goose pimples i hate that too the goose goose flesh goose goose mumps i've never heard goose mumps i just that's because it just came (laughs) from this gentleman right here okay should we grade this thing yeah eight out of ten confident love it um i give this one i give it a b I give it a three out of 10. Uh, it's probably somewhere like a three and a half out of 10. Okay. Yeah. I that's just think fair. we have very different thoughts about this movie and I think that's fine. I think yeah. that, that yeah. does show that it's art because it, you know it's art when two different groups are yeah. battling ra- rapidly about its bar- merits or dismerits. Yeah. Right. And I mean, exactly. I, and I've, read, I've read some really like interesting reviews of this both on, on both sides of the spectrum and you know, if you, I don't know if you really care, like there are good ones out there. I feel like this is one where people hear our review like I have to fucking see this movie now. I mean, yeah, I feel like so. people, I it's on Netflix, to, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's on Netflix. I would love for people to like see it and share I, what you think. I didn't expect this to be so polarizing. Like, I know that like Logan like expected Vanilla Sky to be like super polarizing, um, but like this is not as bad as Vanilla Sky, by the way. No. That should be noted. This is nowhere <laughs> near as no, bad as No, Vanilla Sky. Sky's a lot better. A few things are. I will slap you. I'm sorry, what? I would like to go I, back and see what you rate of Vanilla Sky and see see if that tracks. No, it definitely does. I liked Vanilla Sky surmountably more yeah, than this. Yeah, but what did you yeah, rate Vanilla like the Sky, rating. baby? I'm, I think I probably rated it somewhere in like a six or... No. Oh, no. Probably. No. Absolutely not. Hold I on. Think I as did. soon as we end, we're checking. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Because I, I just don't think that's true. I think it's very true. Um. Anyway. Also, people's opinions can change. I mean, she could like she could now see that Vanilla Sky, in her opinion, is much better, and wanted to change the rating if she gave it a low rating. I it know, doesn't yeah, like demerit her opinion. Yeah. No, I know, but I think you're just saying that. No. When in reality, I, I no, don't think I, she is. I truly, I can truly tell she believe. really did not like this movie. I no. watched it with her. Yeah. I mean, like that's fair, but I think that you definitely rated it lower. I'm, I'm than saying a six. I, I wanted to like this movie. I really did because I, I mean liked, that's fair. I like culty stuff. I like shit like this usually. 
I fucking hated this one. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just I liked Vanilla Sky I, a lot. I don't, I don't like the concept that we're gonna go listen to Vanilla Sky and be like, "See, Vanilla Sky is better because you said no, so." No, I'm not saying that her at all. Score does, her score is bubkiss. She could change her yeah. opinion. I'm just yeah, saying I guess that's that. True. I'm just saying that I'm pretty sure you rated Vanilla Sky lower. Yeah, than you definitely a six. didn't give it a six. And All that's right the then. only thing I'm. Well, fuck me, I guess, right? I guess so. Uh, that's that's the only thing I'm disputing. I mean, sure. All right. Well, I'm changing my rating of Vanilla Sky to be a ten out of ten now. So <laughs> okay. Well, that's okay. Fine. I mean, and then I'm changing this one to a zero point five. I <laughs> okay. mean, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, you might think the Vanilla Sky is a better movie than this will be. You, did not give it, you didn't give it a six. I definitely gave it somewhere around there, but I guess we'll find out. I mean, we'll find out. God, you guys are going <laughs> to... If, if she is right, I don't think she is. But if she is right, man. This I mean, I like, feel bad, but bad. I'm pretty sure you rated it like in the three zone. No, three definitely or not. Four I like that movie. I don't think... I'm pretty I sure we're so. all... Uh, anyways, let's end this What's podcast. What's great about speculation about something that already exists and we're not checking yeah. is that we're just babbling now. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much. Jenny all right, Garpo. guys. So... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just going to do the end card because I feel like it's getting yeah. steamy in here. Go, go, literally, go. it's very That's literally hot what I was saying. I was trying right, to do guys, the end card. You go. So, next week is... Jackie Brown, the Quinn Tarantino classic. And then after that, I believe we're going to review PA three and four. So make sure you watch those movies guys. Thank you so much for liking, commenting and subscribing. Also, thank you so much for the headphone users for not actually sepukuing yourselves that are yelling. We appreciate <laughs> yes. you every single thank day you. for Sorry, living yell. a strong, strong life. No matter how bad your ears hurt. Anyway, love you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.